Ahoy. Welcome back to the table. I guess we hadn't talked about how we were going to do that. Hello! Do, 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 how do we... Do I start or do you start? Where are Star Wars <laughs> references? <laughs> somebody has to do the Star Wars references around here, and since somebody isn't here to do it... Well, you know... <laughs> It happens, I guess. Uh, I, just, I guess. <laughs> so, gentlemen, give me a hot take on how you felt about that little shocker from last episode. Uh, I mean, honestly, I was annoyed at first because I didn't think it was real. So I'm like, this is the worst storytelling when you try to make everybody think make it that, be a big deal uh, and then it's fine. Uh, oh, but then the session ended. <laughs> yeah. And then I, so, yeah, I didn't like fully sink in until. Oh, OK. It was when you said it that it's like, oh, okay, no, they planned this. All right. <laughs> Respect. Respect, Knuckles. <laughs> All right. So uh, do we have anything that needs to be said or described uh, what we're going to be doing before uh, we continue on with our session? Because at where we last left off was you guys, like, Wake finally, like, yeah. left. he went yeah. off to do his own thing. You assume he went to the temple to meet up yeah. with his brother and Nedra. And at this point, you're at the tavern. Like, either we can, like, start the next day or we can, like, pick up from there. Uh, I was, I was going to say it would probably be a, probably a next day thing because I, I feel like we were kind of closing out the night then yeah. and, and Wake was, like, on his way out. Uh, since we didn't really cover it, we kind of just closed on the cliffhanger. Okay. But, but Ezra would have been, like, concerned at first but then kind of realized what he is saying with, with what he's doing and, you know, would... Would probably give a like, well, I, I I understand, friend, and if you if you ever want to come with us again, you're you're always welcome, kind of thing. Uh, you can be rest assured that he is on the uh, if if he wants to live here. Yeah, he's still part of the uh, Fortune Tides company. Yeah, so he's yeah, not yep. going to be ready to be in active duty as of right now because of paperwork restrictions. But right, he's still here. Yeah, it's not like he's dead or anything. As I look to the camera. <laughs> but uh Can I give a thumbs up. <laughs> that would mean the the following morning uh Ezra would be ready for for more interviews and now would have a, a new a new mind about it cuz <laughs> hey one of one of the constants that yeah. he was, that he was operating off of has now changed. Yep. So uh he would now be looking into a navigator since that was a job he basically You can, you can still chill here Ben just I'm going to ask like yeah. Yeah, don't, it, don't take it, part it, in what's no, going on. Yeah. Eloy's not here, but we're not sending Ben out of the room. Cause, Alrighty, right, so okay. with that, so you're you're taking a rest. You're pretty yeah. much like absorbing everything that just fucking happened. Yeah. How does Eloy feel in all this, by the way? Um, you know, I think we've uh, we've discussed Eloy. Like the the conversation last night was not goodbye forever, it, but. The French just say au revoir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, sooner or later, we are going to leave this island and Wake is going to stay. Eloy is going to want a proper goodbye at that time. Yeah. Like, I think if anything, he's probably just spending some alone time, like, thinking over that. Mm. All right. So then you wake up to the idea that, oh, now it's time to get some interviews out of the way. Yes. So you head on over to the guild hall. Uh, that halfling woman, woman is still sitting there, just like, ah, Mr. Lockwood, it's nice of you to come here at a very punctual time. We have at least another candidate or two that we can open up to you. Oh, really? Uh, so was there anyone you had any particular interest in interviewing? Uh, yes, I was planning on interviewing Charlotte Gillies, the, uh, the navigator. Ah, excellent. Well, I can see if she's uh, ready. Please, uh, you can head over to the room and uh, we'll get everything all set up for you. Absolutely. So at this point in time... Uh, uh, the halfling like lets you into the room. You sit down. You have like orange juice and some toast ready. Like she prepared you a little breakfast to sit down. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, she walks away, and five minutes have passed. Okay. And you start hearing footsteps coming in from the other side. Hello. Uh, hey. <coughs> How's it going? Charles. Uh, this this Charlotte? Uh, scraggly. A. Scraggly yet scruffy looking gentleman walks in. His uh, skin, uh, you can put up the all of black. Actually. Yeah, all of black. Yes, white, all the black. white hair. Looks kind of like the opposite of. Holy shit. It's oh. Dante. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. So, uh, you assume Charlotte came in? Uh, yeah, hanging over his right shoulder. Is a blade of some description, but it appears to be a, uh, like, there appears to be, like, an eye, and it appears to be wrapped in flesh. The eye is this putrid yellow color. 
and it just slowly kind of blinks. Uh, yeah, no, uh, she uh, had to, she just kind of wandered off, so uh, I, th I thought I'd uh, let myself in here, and uh, you know, shame to let interview time go to waste. I, I'm sure you have a lot of valuable things to do with your time. Uh, Captain... Uh, Lockwood, Captain Ezra Lockwood. Lockwood and... of the Natural Wonders, right? Yes, and you would be? Well, <laughs> pardon me. Yes, uh, Huxley, Dagon Huxley, at your at your service, sir. A pleasure to meet you, Dagon. Uh, I'm, forgive me for being a, a, a tad un, uh, unprepared for this interview, but uh, Dagon, what uh, what what do you do? Well, uh, what 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 positions are you looking for exactly? I do a little bit of everything, to be frank, <laughs> when it comes to boats. <laughs> I'm gonna to boats! In. That's the best thing to ask for a fucking ship! Excuse me. This is a bit <laughs> unprecedented for uh, for the interviews. I'm gonna roll an insight check. Go for that. it! What do you want to roll against this? Insight check? I'll just roll a straight charisma check. Uh, that would, uh, do we, well, what do you want to do? Deception or... Uh... Yeah, deception's fine. Okay, fair enough. I um, got a modified 20. All right, well, I'm buying whatever you're selling. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I do great on boats. <laughs> You know, you, you strike me as a boatman. Well, I, I was a captain myself once, you see. Uh, lot, lots of things happened. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been around. You don't say. Well, yes. uh, well okay. Uh, well, well, obviously, sailing and boating experience is important, and it seems you've got that covered. Very much uh, so. You look prepared for combat, I would say. Uh, if, uh, if trouble, if, there, if you know, we were, say, attacked on the high seas, would you, uh, would you be... One willing and two capable of defending yourself and uh, protecting the ship. Zafonir. A voice comes from his sword. Yes, very much so. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I've been experienced in a little bit of wet work, shall we say? Uh, that's that. That sounds great. I, I, I have to ask though. It sounded. Ocean pond. <laughs> it, it, it sounded like there was a. Did you, were you clearing your throat there or something? <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, thank you for uh, ignoring the elephant as much as possible. Uh, let me introduce you. This is my companion, Griorchik the All Gobbler. Griorchik does nis nis fafanir. He doesn't like my translations. Oh, well, uh. You can call him Chick for short. He'll. He doesn't like it, but he'll fucking deal. <laughs> well, all right, you fucking wanna... deal. You're the, you're, the, you're the former Captain Dagon. Uh, nice to meet you, Chick. Yes, they call me the Wraith of Ibrakol. Oh, well, Ibrakol, you've been there, have you? I was born there, unfortunately. Well, fascinating. Uh, unfortunately. I've, <laughs> yes. I've, I've only heard good things about the, about the place. Hadn't realized it was a... Well, you haven't seen the sides I have. You see, uh, you might notice I'm a little different from the... Uh, rest of my kind kind of looks at his flesh, shows off his hair a little bit. He's got. Uh, he has a. Uh, so, uh, can you describe like at least like the physical description of your facial features, so like we could try to like try to. Yeah, basically, he's he's, he's got he's got a, uh, a fairly good bone structure, but okay. his uh, flesh is olive black, and his hair is you know pure white. He looks like an ant. Like he looks like an anti Asimar, basically. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got it. To be fair, that still <laughs> to be still to be fair that still sounds less try hard than the term fallen Asimar, which no, is technically yeah, that's, the race. That's, that's, yeah, no, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> yes, I was uh, born and well, let's just say my parents didn't take kindly to my disposition and threw me to an orphanage. I was raised there, not so kindly, and not many took very kindly to me, so I fell in with some bad crowds, let's say, uh, eventually made some friends, hit the seas, and, well, lots happened since then. Hmm. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm rather curious about your companion. How did you two, uh, meet? Ah, uh, fantastic tale, that one. Well, this started after me and my crew, he says as he, like, kind of uh, jingles the five coins that are hanging around his neck. Uh, we were off at seas, and, well, we were... After raiding a call shipment of silver, we ran into a rather nasty storm while evading some naval pursuers, and, well, if it weren't for my masterful helmsmanship, if I do say, we would have found ourselves at the bottom of the sea oh. a lot sooner than we ended up there. So, <clears throat> so, you, <laughs> so you did sink. No, actually. Uh, we, uh, amazing thing is, we made it through the storm, and we just kind of rested for a while, tried to get our bearings at night, but... My 
my friends, Terrian, he saw a, well, white tower just sitting out in the ocean, and we went and checked it out, uh, found our way inside eventually, as this bizarre puzzle with cows and tentacles and some shit, but eventually we made it to the top, and some cow-headed man handed us a, showed us a crystal and said, beware, great power, something, something, something. I was, and like, look, I was looking at the crystal. I was really... Oh, nat naturally. Yeah. So we grabbed that, and the moment we did that, we ended up in this dark, dank space somewhere. It turns out we were in some weird bubble at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, some freaky ghost of my kin started chatting at us about some ancient evil offering some great power, blah, blah, blah. If we wanted to return to the service, must kill it. So, hey, whatever, we'll go kill this damn thing. Uh, went down this deep, dark tunnel, and there at the end was a beast made of tentacles and eyes. And it has as many mouths as it had eyes, and trust me, it had a lot of fucking eyes. So we took to this beast, and it started consuming my men, one after the other after the other. The moment you say that, you hear the sword. <laughs> Till one moment I was standing in front of it, bloodied, and I took my blade, and I said, You will not have Dagon this day, damnable beast! And I stabbed it square in its heart. And that was Chick. Yes. Uh, he offered me this contract to let him survive it. Oh, shit. Oh, did I hear... Do you hear in the, off in the distance? Did I hear that there's a one Mr. Dagon inside there? Say no. Please. Who Who's asking? You open the door and Char is standing there just looking down at Dagon, just like, again with this. Again. Oh, my fucking God. I'm trying to make some coins. You are not on the block today, Dagon. Get Come on, let's go. No, oh, excuse, for what? For excuse what? me. Excuse me. And uh, nope, get out. <laughs> fucking what? Shaw, you watch as Shar grabs the man with ma uh, with uh, two manacles from the back of the wrist and pulls him up and takes him outside. Just trying to make my coin. The halfling woman kind of like waddles in, just like, oh, I'm so sorry that that oh. one kind of like slipped through. He's not supposed to be up on the roster for the longest time. I mean, that that's that's quite all right, but I have to say the. The man left quite the impression. Uh, oh, we, we know. He, he uh, it, What he says is true, but uh, he's kind of a little eccentric and erratic in his actions, like telling our your actual interviewee that the voice, a voice of God told her to be somewhere else. She like, she, she's writing down, like scribbling down notes, just like, we have to clean all this up. We're, we're trying to gather her as quickly as possible. Uh, that, was, that was not part of the thing, I assure you. That was not part of the process. Uh, it's 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 quite all right, actually. Um, I know you say he's not he's not on the block, but uh, I I honestly would would like to speak more with this man. Would that be? If when uh, when the first rotation of the block is up, we will arrange that. For now, that was kind of an illegal procedure, and most likely we'll get him his pay docked. Uh, well, that's that's unfortunate. It sounds like he's already been through so much. But, but anyway, uh, we'll, please stay right here. We'll we will absolutely. Uh, find Charlotte as quickly as possible. E Excellent. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Tower. And with that, uh, you watch as a uh, dark blue skinned sea elf kind of like wanders her way in. She looks like she's like in her early 20s. Okay. She kind of like knocks on the door and like peeks her head in. Uh, she's wearing a very large flowing like robe. Uh, it kind of like looks like it's a giant scarf that wraps around her head and kind of like almost forms into a hood. Uh, the rest of her body kind of like has. Oh, let's, uh, let me just double check these notes here real quick. Okay, yeah. Uh, she actually like you actually watch as like her sleeve almost looks like it's a little bit of a belt bandolier where there's a bunch of books like going down it. There's multiple tomes that reach down her arm. Okay. And the rest of her is covered in the rest of her robe. She kind of like, uh, she comes in. Is this where uh, Mr. Lockwood is uh, having interviews? Yes. Uh, are you, are you, uh, <laughs> looks now slightly more suspicious. Charlotte Gillies? Yes, that is. That's my oh, name. Oh, thank God. She, All right. He, she comes in and like shakes your hand. Sorry. We, uh, you watch as like, she has little tattoos of what looks like uh, runic, sculpt, uh, runic scripture going down the middle of her hand. Oh, that's some, 
some fascinating artwork on your hand there. Is that, does, does that have, hold any special meaning? Oh, yes. This was actually uh, one of the parting gifts my convent gave me. Oh. Does it, does it have it, like, it, does it have a specific meaning, or was it just a, just a, 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 like a symbol? Well, it does have a meaning. Uh, it's, it was, again, well, I, I guess I should explain myself. Uh, well, anyway, well, I've said my name is Charlotte Jalees. Uh, mm -hmm. I am, I am someone who, I, I guess I pride myself as a navigator, if that's what you were looking for. Yes. Excellent. Uh, so I, I guess I should explain the story with my hand and everything and well, all the rest of my gear. Um, when I was a little girl, I always used to stare up into the night sky and I'd like to like connect the dots into the stars and find constellations and write all kinds of star maps. Unfortunately, where I lived wasn't really too keen on that and thought I was speaking in tongues. Mm. So okay. they placed me in a convent where they tried to teach me the ways of Ludarius, but for the longest time, I would always hear this voice from the night sky, which I just deemed to call it that because it made it a little bit more simpler. As I grew to, in secret, like, in secret, I kind of, like, spoke to this night sky uh, entity as well uh, while I was at the combat trying to at least figure out how to make more star maps and how to, like, understand, like, what's beyond the sky, something we cannot reach with our physical selves. I found out that it actually was a voice coming from uh, Vlasimith, the god of knowledge. Oh. And after some rigorous testing and through a couple of cross-checkings with a bunch of other clergies, the sisters found out that they screwed up royally. So, so you were in direct communication with one of the gods. In some fashion, yes. This night sky voice, I don't know what exactly it is. All I know is that it gives me knowledge when I seek it, and when I look into the stars, I can see the world about me. Huh. Fascinating. So, this this night sky voice, I... Again, I, I don't know what its true form is, but if I look into this night sky and I can communicate with it, it can tell me about all sorts of things around me. Ha has it ever led you astray or, uh, or lied to you or thrown you off a course you were perhaps searching for? Not to my knowledge. I mean, I lived in the convent for most of my childhood going into my young adult life. Uh, I was, they kind of saw me as a little crazy because of the fact that I was speaking to the night sky voice. But now they actually, like, this is actually my third year uh, being on my own, living out here in Wright. I've done a couple of odd jobs around town, but I know that my abilities to actually look into the sky at night and being able to speak to a voice that could just give me a huge scope of the entire area, I know that could be useful to someone out here. No, I just, I, I really just want to go out to the ocean and explore. I, I, I can't be stuck in one place. So have you never had the, had the chance to, to explore or be at, at sea? I've been at sea a couple of times, of course. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I lived near a port town before I was moved to the convent uh, more inland. However, I never sailed more than probably a month, like okay. uh, at least for the longest time. Uh, for the most time, I've probably been on boats that were like that appe appease to Kelpie every every week or so. But beyond that, I never really sailed on a huge voyage. Uh, have you have you ever been the the head navigator for a vessel? No, but the one time, the one of the bigger tests that I had that explained that I was speaking to the night sky voice, which was of Vlasmith. Uh, one night we actually got lost at sea, uh, during a violent storm, and I actually located, uh, uh, over the course of the night, I actually was able to get us back to an archipelago close to the right before we could actually, uh, before we ran out of food. So, I effective uh, this night sky voice effectively saved not only my reputation as a clergyman, but also pretty much everyone else on the ship. Huh. What about, uh... Have you ever had to to protect yourself in a fight if uh, oh, if, yes. if trouble Absolutely. came aboard? Oh, between you and me, like when I was living in the convent, I kind of had to fend off a lot of folks who were trying to steal from the uh, clergy. Ah, well, uh, what method of fighting do you use? She just takes out this big book and opens it, and she shows you a small hand axe inside of it. Is that just in this book? Oh no, she just smiles. She flips the pages. 
You would think that it would still be the same axe considering it looked like it was a cutout. Mm -hmm. She opens it up again. There's a different weapon in there. It looks like the uh, it looks like the hilt of a great sword in the inside of it. So you can summon summon weapons from your books. Yep, I can conjure all sorts of things through these books. So long as I, so long as the night sky voice uh, speaks of it within my mind, and I know exactly what the object is from physically seeing it and feeling it, I can conjure it in these tomes. Wow. That is a that is an ability that you need to be advertising because that sounds. Well, I don't, I I didn't I don't know I I don't like conflict, but at the same time, if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. The world's a dangerous place. Correct. Uh, can these can these books be used to summon anything else? Is it or is it just have have you only had experience with weapons? Well, uh, considering that this tome is a tome about weapons itself, I'd imagine it's only just for that. Mm. Uh, and. Uh, another important question: How much? Uh, what are what are your rates? How much do you charge to uh, to be brought on as a navigator? I would like three hundred gold a week. Very modest amount. Um, and a, another important question: uh, I kind of show her the, the list of names. Anyone on here? You have any specific uh, either ties to or agitations with? Uh, would there be any problems, concerns? with anyone on this crew, and uh, on the off chance, is there anyone that you know you work especially well with? I don't quite know most of the people who are on the block as of right now. I do know a lot of people give... Uh, let's see, let me just double check my names here. Yep. A lot of people give poor Pavlos a really bad rap because of his nature, but it's not his fault so much as it... Just like, I kind of have a sort of kinship with what he's going through, since I was kind of locked away for 16 years of my life because I heard a voice that actually was real. Mm -hmm. Poor Mr. Uh, poor Pavlos is haunted, but at the same time, it's also a boon than it is a, than it is a curse. I see. At least that's how I see it anyway. Hmm. Well, thank you, Charlotte. You've, you've given me a lot to think about, and uh, thank you so much for your time. This has been a pleasure. All right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Lockwood. I hope we'll be in touch. Thank you. She stands up and walks out. As, as she does so, you see Char look over to you and just, like, turn the corner. You, come on. We gotta talk to the big boss. But, okay. I follow. You may return. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so you are you are uh, taken with uh, Char to go into the same room that you had the uh, conversation with uh, Pontus Ryle and everyone else from the Volition. Okay. Eloy's there, too, who's half awake. <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd sleep in today. I'm... So Oh, was you doing interviews? Yeah, I was. Hi, Eloy. How, how, how many secret dragons did you find? Just one or none? <laughs> Hold on, Eloy. I'm going to write this down really quick. <laughs> ask if dragon. I'm just saying, if you asked everybody, which I know you did because we talked about this. Char is standing right there and looking at you. I'm a dragonborn. Right. I said secret dragons. You're, you're just out in the open. Is Dagon just sitting there, like, manacled to a chair? Like, arms yeah, yeah. back to a <laughs> yeah, chair? Yeah, Char, Char kind of, like, handcuffed you in the chair there. Is that a common thing, Captain Lockwood? Dragons? Well, we've we've interacted with one or two in our in our journeys, but uh, only one of them was not clearly a dragon, a, you know, upon sight. Fair enough. I mean, also, also you know, define common, because... We keep running into all kinds of stuff, and then when we tell people about it, they're like, oh my god, you met a minotaur man? You spooked a ghost to death? And and we're like, yeah, that's no, that's what we do, though. Also, uh, Dagon, this is Eloy, Eli. This is Dagon Huxley. Oh, I, hi. Hi there, I'd shake your hand, but I've been very rudely uh, constrained at the moment. Do you, I knew a Dagon when I was growing up. Do you carve runes, too? I, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I do not. Uh, okay, he used to carve them for one month every spring. We used to call him May Runes Dagon. Hmm. Yes, chat, that's what I've been working on the whole, the whole interview. <laughs> the, uh, what, what implement did he carve with? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll feed this fire. <laughs> he had this real nice, uh, I guess it was a razor you'd call it. Oh, sounds very nice. No, I don't know this man. Oh, all right, yeah, no relation. I, I didn't figure, just curious. Yeah, While very... this is happening... <laughs> Char's just waiting for a cut in silence. He's not going to feed into this shit. 
You know, Dagon, normally we'd send you over to uh, the big green boys for yes, doing I'm this aware. kind of nonsense again three times in a fucking row. Look, I am sick and tired of living in the goddamn tent shack with the other unhirables, so either lower the goddamn rent or let me make my nickel. Ezra, well, is it too late to change our group name to the Unhirables? <laughs> that sounds real good. It does sound marketable, but I'm afraid that uh, it also might undercut the, the message we're selling. It's not, it's not, <laughs> that's fire. <laughs> well, frankly, right. it's not a great group. They're very surly. They aren't all as charming as me. <laughs> well, don't worry. You might actually be getting your due. Oh. You're not going to be talking to the big boys in green today. Oh, thank God. You'll actually be talking to Mr. Pontus Ryle today. Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. You're gonna enjoy this. Have a good one, buddy. He like looks over to you guys and just nods, jo nods like a little bit in respect and walks away. Did you ask him why we're here? I, I, man, I'm barely awake. I haven't even had no coffee yet. Oh no. So, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I may have followed you. Okay. And I, you know, there, there's been words traveling around about a. Elf-looking man and a, well, a donkey man and some peculiarly rare breed of fish man meeting with three pirate lords. I assume you to be the lot. Excellent. Good to know. <laughs> Do you want to roll something <laughs> against that? No. <laughs> Ezra was going to fight it, but this guy has already wowed him previously, so he's just going to be like... You got me. You hear a voice come from like another side of the room as Pontus like makes himself appear and appear before you guys. Jesus! Little warning. Oh, God does that every fucking time. He like stickers. Hi. He stickers to himself and sits down at the table. Good morning, gentlemen. Pontus, I appear to have met a very charming rapscallion. <laughs> What's uh... indeed? Uh, this rap this rapscallion is telling the truth when he says that he followed you. It appears your little shake up with the vampires has unfortunately brought you straight outside of his hovel of a house. They call it the tent shack, uh, or the, uh, sorry, the hammock shack. It's, it's not a great place. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it was near the alleyway where we were jumped? Look, all of, yes, yeah, pretty much. It's uh, just outside. Somebody punched my wall. It's uh, oh. broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid he doesn't work with us. Well, all right. I'll take your word on that one. Can somebody unlock these? Just, okay, no, I'm stuck here. Fine, fine, cool. It's whatever. Until you hear my proposition, you will be released. I know you are looking for coin, Dagon, and I know it is not your time to be on the block, as my orc brethren were telling me that you seem to like to jump the gun. Look, it's not my fault. You put me on that list again and again, and sure, I got work at first, but soon, you know, people started getting a little tired of... Sniffer. Yes, you. I hear it also scares one Miss Gentle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she tries to avoid me. Gives me a bit of a wide berth. <laughs> ah, crazy one, that one. Little she... minx, I'll tell you. What, uh... I'm sorry, I have to know. Why, what... She seems like a... Kind of a... Just a, a stone wall of just dealing with atrocities. How, how are you, uh intimidating her. Well, it could be a combination of things. It could be Chick here and his sheer anti-animal magnetism. First, now, fuck you too. <laughs> or it could be something like this. And he closes his eyes for a second as his hair begins to emanate dark flames. <laughs> Same with his eyebrows and beard. He opens his eyes and they are two burning spheres of fire as two skeletal wings, but man, this sounds really try-hard now that I say it out loud. <laughs> it is literally in the description of I, the ability! I know, I can't... I it's can't, in the book, I can't lie, it's in the book. I can't blame you, it's just like, man, he went out of his way to be ten times edgier than Wake was. <laughs> and yet somehow he's going to be less edgy, trust me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, two giant spectral skeletal wings pop from his back, and you need to make a charisma save. Anybody in the room? Oop. Against a DC 16. Done and done. <laughs> I think that's the first charisma save I've had to roll. Bard's yeah, got proficiency in it. Yeah, nice. charisma saves aren't really a thing. Yeah, not often. 
It's true. Not unless you have, you're fighting a certain spellcaster. Yeah. Well, I failed and I got a 13. Yeah, you're afraid of me. Okay. Oh my god. Yes, I call this the Reaper. <laughs> this is my pot. <laughs> Ugh, fucking. <laughs> anyway, I call it the Reaper. Everybody else called it the Wraith. And I guess you don't get to choose your own nickname. We can't all be bards, yes. <laughs> I turned it off. <sighs> so yeah, there's a combination of things, really. That's that's real cool. You ever spook a ghost to death with that? I can't say I've ever scared anything to death, no. Oh, all right. No, no, that's, still, that's, no that's real good, though. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> good. That's a good trick. That's, ch that's, that's Chick's deal. Chick does the... <laughs> look, I, I'm, I'm proficient with a sword. Chick does a... <laughs> Pontus, why are we here? <laughs> Pots is just like sitting there, just like thank you. <laughs> Takes a little, like a little, a little oh, goblet. I'm sorry. Do you have somewhere to be? <laughs> <laughs> no. <'cause... laughs> the reason I brought you here and you as well, Dagon. You were just an unfortunate bystander in all this, so you get to hear this as well. Hooray! You two. <laughs> Again, I understand that you were attacked by vampires, and. Unfortunately, this was a miscalculation on our part. As you recall, we were in the midst of translating the book and trying to do it in secrecy as much as possible. Unfortunately, cast, uh, saying a few things inside the book had cast some spells and it got garnered the attention of its owner. Thus, it sent a few folks down here and some of his agents to try and retrieve the book or kill those who were tied to it in some way, shape, or form. I noticed. We do apologize but we did want you to come here so we could explain what we actually discovered. And it might be of interest to you, considering that, Mr. Eloy, I believe you are going to have an audience with the calls. Yeah, that's the plan. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a good question, because they're all like, they're like you, but they're all shiny and nice. Oh, aren't they, though? Yeah. Yeah, real, real I mean, beacons of personality. Oh, I are. mean... There's, there's thems as are nice, and then thems as are nice, air quotes. Ah, but yes, I know more of them. Yeah, I know at least one of yeah, them like we've, that. We've, uh, we've encountered at least one. <laughs> oh, that's an echo through my brain. <laughs> <laughs> they all talk like they have a massive underbite. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Serple seemed fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just double check if I have my stuff here. Yep, okay. Uh... Unfortunately, the lamprey dogma was able to track us down, and they were able to retrieve the book. However, we were able to write down a few notes and discover what their aims were at first. And it pains me to say this, but it might... Unfortunately, it involves you in all of this, because you took part in the Mantaruva, thus they actually know your faces. Getting a lot of proper nouns here. It was a boat we got on. Okay. You know of the Lamprey Dog, but don't you, Dagon? We've had run-ins, yes. Unfortunately, our fellows here are mired deep, deep within some of their darker secrets. Hmm. Intriguing. Indeed. And your talents might be very useful to this cause. However, let me explain to you what we actually were able to find in all of this. The book contained lots of spells uh, that have to do with nullifying negative effects. To our dismay, we actually discovered that through some deciphering, they planned to try and find some way to completely negate all negative effects of vampirism. Okay. Daywalkers! Sorry. I mean, that sounds great. If they didn't have to, you know, feed on folks no more? That's not the part they're trying to get rid of. Oh, nuts. That'd they're be useful. <laughs> it, indeed. It would make them effective members of society, but that's not what their end goal is. Their end goal is to try and make their kind the more supreme being, taking over an entire facility without the aid of, without the worry of the sun or any sort of radiance be, uh, bellowing down on them and destroying their bodies. They could be an unstoppable force and take over. The, it would be the onrush all over again. Mm. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound like much fun. It really is not. But what's worse is that we also found their core ingredients for trying to make this formula. It is a ritual of sorts, but it does require something very, very potent and very powerful. It, I'm, I, I'm gonna say blood, I'm gonna guess blood. Is it blood? I bet it's blood. No, it is not blood, Eloy. Oh. A very good guess, though. Thank you. <laughs> Click pat you on the head. <laughs> this veneer. It's probably not souls. It is souls. Oh my fucking God, good for you, chick. It's the soul 
of the it's it's a soul of one of the royal family of the Kals. And based on the notes, they wish to assassinate the newly crowned king. Well, that's no good. He's just a little guy. Indeed. I'm sorry, Chick's a little curious. If something else were to get this soul first, would that be a uh, win for us or a... Like, if they were not to get it, but something else... Were... He's really insistent on things like this. Yes, I know your companion wishes to drink a lot of souls for his own gain. He's a little hungry. We would much rather have it that someone with that much power and pure radiant essence not be devoured or be used lightly. Fair enough, see, chick, no permission. Don't give me that look. Can you trust him? Like, if you tell him no permission, will he actually do that? We've got this, like, brain link thing. I've got, like, look, as long as he's in my hand, he can't do anything without me, but... Okay. Just, just wanted to make sure. No, just though curious. The note, yeah, no, though, though the notes state that they're actually trying to assassinate the newly crowned king, that doesn't mean that they can't suffice with someone else from the royal family. Hmm. So anyone from the royal family is a is a target of sorts. Shouldn't we let the calls know? I mean, I feel like Indeed, they're letting, letting their guard be aware of this uh, would... That's why we would like to send you down there to get, deliver the message. And... We may also have an idea of how to kill the assailant and also find the source, ending it once and for all. Is it a dragon's breath potion? Because I just used the one, but I'd, I'd take another. No, Eloy, it's not a dragon's breath potion. Oh, but that was real good. I want to do it again. It might help, Eloy. Maybe we can b find some later. Okay. Now, it is to our attention that the correlation of the new king will take place in a week. We would like you to head down there maybe within a three days time of, to give you, chance, uh, give you a chance to prepare and gather any information you would like to before heading down there. Also procuring a ship and a crew as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. I, I think we got a couple of offers. And yeah, I, 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 we should be able to, to find ourselves a ship. Am Indeed. I to, am I to assume this is where I come in? Indeed. Your blood, being that of a fallen Asimar, you would be a great asset in not only deterring the vampires, but also destroying them. Is that a thing you do? I guess. I mean, they certainly don't like me. They try to give me a wide berth, but never really questioned it. A lot That's of because your do. blood can literally kill them. Well, yeah. it's not fanciful. All, all us donkey people got wide berths, four legs that need to get out. Yeah. So, Mr. Dagon, you will be under my pit. You will be under my coin. And you will accompany these gentlemen in protecting and assassinating the uh, assailants of the calls. Assassinating assassins. You know, I took, I, I took a lot of time trying to get away from assassination missions. You, you know that, right? But sure, why not? That was about desperate. I don't anyway. see why this would be a problem. Your sword gets souls, be they corrupt or not, but it still gets to eat. Yes. Mm. I just like to avoid bloodshed whenever possible. <sighs> Seriously, though, these manacles, they're chafing. You, you watch him, like, twirl his hand up in the air, and you hear, like, the manacles actually snap behind you, and they open. Ah, <sighs> thank you. They need a lighter touch. They, they clamp tightly. I, I think they're meant to make you feel bad for the things you did, so, you know, it's not an understandable. That and yet not it exactly doesn't work. It's strange. Yeah. Ezra's been thrown in jail before, so he has a <laughs> he has a similar like, yeah, you're right. You have a cost at this, though, Mr. Dagon. I trust. I can't you imagine will... there wouldn't be a. Of course, no. However, there is a reward if you are to see this mission through. You will be put up higher on the bounty boards much more frequently, with a higher pay. However, double cross these two, and I will see to it that you have no more bounties and no more life. You see, you have to throw things out there like that, like I'm some untrustworthy sort. I, it's not that I don't trust you. I don't trust your companion. You know that chick? He doesn't like you. I don't like you either. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> For all intents and purposes, Mr. Dagon, that's a liability you have on your shoulder. It, quite frankly, is just as bad as the mimic ship that's sitting outside of port as we speak. I was going oh, to ask yeah. more questions about that, but didn't seem the time. Now, what I need you two to do is to 
find yourself a ship as quickly as possible, finish any prior engagements you have, and quickly fill out the rest of your ship as quickly as possible. You have two days to decide all this. Understood. Uh... And you will be rewarded quite handsomely for this. Do not think this is being a forceful proposition on you. Again, I apologize that we had to indeed put this task on you at a moment's notice, but your timing with visiting the calls was the best solution we can think of at the time. We were already invited to the coronation, so I, I can't I can't really complain about you <laughs> saying we're going somewhere. We were planning on going anyway, but uh, this might... We, we had to go to the coronation, so this isn't even moving up our timetable, so I... I think it's safe to say we can accept this. And choose your faction wisely, Mr. Lockwood. Depending on which flag you tend to fly will hold great consequence when this mission is complete. The calls will be looking towards that flag for support going forward. Understood. Question, Mr. Ryle. Have you ever worked as a navigator? Clerical one, I suppose. Oh, so you're like a, a Pontus pilot. You know what? You know what? I'm not upset because it was just a matter of time before that gag got out. I'm just happy it happened now. <laughs> now we can all wash our hands of it. There we go. <laughs> I was waiting. For this. Do you have any other questions? Um, you said that the, that the vampires now knew our faces because of our connection to the book. Uh, Indeed, you and your crew... Your, uh, your allies, when coming into port, are targets now of the Lamprey Dogma. Uh, I just want to make sure that um, our, our companion, Wake, is planning on staying on the island, and I just want to oh, yes. make sure that you're aware that some of the crew that might be being hunted will still be around. Oh, yes. They are very safe here in this entire in this city. Quite frankly, it was rather foolish that the vampires decided to attack you in, this, in the town, Considering that you were new to here, they thought that it would be a keen way to at least get rid of some evidence. Well, I, I, I trust that this place is, is as safe as you say, but at, at the same time, we, we were still attacked by those vampires, so things can slip through the cracks. I Security just... has been bolstered quite heavily. Thank you. It's notable. I, I, I did have another question. So y'all told us about how the vampires took, took Mr. Golfer, how he might be up up walking around unnatural-like. Indeed. That is also another thing we are very concerned of. Your previous companion, if he knew any secrets, could be divulging them to the vampires at this very moment. That's not great. Mm. I hadn't even thought about that. That is also another reason why the Lamprey Dogma knows your face. Yeah, I, I hadn't even been thinking about the practical implications. I just, if you get any word of, of his whereabouts, Sadly not. The rest of the vampires that we were unable to hunt down have gotten away, and there was no dwarf amongst them. It don't, it don't sit right to let, let what's left of one of our own get used that way. I, I want to put a stop to that. I sympathize. Thank you. Very well. We can speak of the monetary reward once this entire ordeal is over. Before you set sail, I will give you a price and any sort of reward, as much as I could possibly give to you. Just name it, and I will give it to you. What about resources? Mm, indeed. We will, be we will be granting you a week's worth of supplies for a ship. Any sort of resource? What other resources do you tend to, uh, tend to procure? Well, in my experiences with the calls, granted they're a little more violent than most, um... Typically, weaponry of some description, cannons, ammunition, the like. Are you claiming that the the calls might be in league with these characters? Oh, absolutely not. Especially if they're the ones that are, you know, being hunted. I'm simply claiming that should we, you know, go on this voyage and happen to say get ambushed by this lamprey dogma. It would probably behoove us to have some form of weaponry. You feel, all three of you feel this dark chill run down your spine as standing behind you is Joe Massacre. I know that feeling. Joe, yep. that you? 
You don't. He doesn't. Res- you, he doesn't respond to you. But uh, <laughs> ah, Mister Massacre here can assist you in that regard. Then he can imbue one of your weapons. He can at least give you a scroll to imbue your weapons with necrotic damage. Fair hmm. enough. Appreciate it. Indeed. Now, what sort of weapon you wish to imbue, that will be on your part to find in town. Bring it back here, and we will dou- and we will douse it in necrotic energy post haste. So if we wheel a, you, you want to just wheel a cannon in through the front door? I assume we can present it like the idea to them and bring them to the cannon. Yeah, that's 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 fair. I'm I'm just. I would I would assume it'd be a little bit more concealing than that. Yeah, I mean. Bringing, bringing firearms the size of a, of a person would be a little bit more difficult, especially when those who are in full of radiant damage can sense it. With a weapon, we could conceal a blade, not so much a cannonball. Fair enough. However, if you can find someone else in town, if you wish to speak to anyone else uh, you, were, you have not spoken to yet, mm-hmm. maybe they know something. I, we can provide you with as much as we can, but everyone here in this town has some sort of particular skill that they can offer, and any sort of trade that they can give. You Colby might actually was talking about blessing some weapon or something, wasn't he? Was he? <laughs> I feel do, like that. Do not make Koloff Pliskin. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Put enough fucking energy to making that man, and you fucking all ignore him. Screw you. <laughs> He was being taken to jail. <laughs> you don't know that! <laughs> he actually I, sleeps in the hammock I, opposite mine. I was just trying to remember if Eloy was there for that conversation. <laughs> he was gone a lot of that episode. No, That's unfortunately. Fair. Alrighty, well... well I can't ask Pontus, Wake. <laughs> uh, Pontus can, uh, can imbue any weapon you wish to give him in necrotic and or uh, radiant energy. That's as much as he can offer you with that. Going against vampires, I'm guessing radiant would be significantly more beneficial. That's what I was thinking. If... Does it work on, like, I got this I got this bow, what I use for hunting. Well, haven't in quite a while. Would, would you use it on the bow or on the arrows or both or neither? Uh, they would all cost a certain amount of money. If you want to do the bow, that's going to cost a little bit. They, he, they can give you a discount. Arrows, he can do for free. All right. Like, like how many arrows could you get? Like, how many do you have in your quiver? 10,000. <laughs> I have written down 119. I must have used one at some point. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Exactly one. He can I, he can make a quiver of 30 okay. into radiant weapons. Yeah, I mean that's how many I have total. I don't know that I'm actually carrying that many at all times. Yeah, so he can he can make an entire quiver like of at least one bundle of arrows into radiant arrows. Okay. So they deal the same amount of damage. They're just now considered magic weapons, so they're arrows plus 1 and they deal radiant damage. Gotcha. With that, gentlemen, I will let you to it. Please return when you have under- uh, when you uh, have all the answers, Mr. Lockwood. Mm-hmm. If there are any other questions, you can find any of my other subordinates here. I'm certain they all have certain talents that could be beneficial to you as you prepare. And with that, good day. Thank you very much. Dagon kind of bows his head as he's like still stretching out his wrist. Well, not the introduction I had planned, frankly, <laughs> but... Uh... I yeah. I use the restroom super bad, so I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Want to take a break here? Yeah, I sure. I have a slide that I can throw in there. Oh. We'll be right back <laughs> after this. Welcome back to the table. All right. So with that little bit of information, uh, you guys are kind of standing in the guild hall now. You have basically your mission. You have two days to prep, gather info, do any sort of resource gathering, talk to any people, and take care of a few businesses in getting your ship. Uh, deciding which factor it's going to be on and getting your crew members. Standing right next to you is one right now. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So, uh, since we'll be working together, I guess, under the, uh, big man, what positions is it that you need filled exactly? I, I didn't really ask. Well, we we're looking a bit for a, for a navigator, a uh, helmsman. I can do either of those things. All right. Uh, do you have any experience in, uh, you, you have any medical practice or, uh, you know, good with, good with injuries or good, bed, good bedside manner? Um, bedside manner, yes, A, a plus. But uh, yeah. I, 
as Chick is uh, currently <laughs> exclaiming very rudely, uh, we are we are better at uh, putting things to rest and uh, not in so much of a good way. You see, one of the reasons I try to avoid wet work is, um, well, like I stated earlier, Chick likes to eat souls, and sometimes the job gets a little messy, he goes a little crazy, we consume a little bit more. It's profoundly fucked up when you think about it, but mm -hmm. a man's got to make coin. No, I understand. So so just just so I can have this prepared so I can think about it during our journey. Yes. Uh, your your companion chick likes to likes to eat souls sometimes when work gets a little dangerous or uh, specifically more of the recently deceased. The fresher the better. He does not like old souls. Okay. Well, all right. That just sounds like your classic berserker being held down and needs to not be a uh, you know thrown I, into situations where it's too dangerous. We can. I don't like old souls either. That's just what young people who are full of himself call themselves. <laughs> Yes, Chick, chick agrees, true. but it's more in a literal sense. <laughs> Good old Chick. He's just going to keep correcting me. <laughs> but uh, other than that, we were we were also you know in in the in the market for a cannoneer, perhaps if someone just you know mans cannons and whatnot. We really haven't had. If you mm. wish to, uh, you not, can you can show him the list. Yeah, not not my specialty, yeah. but I but, uh, I can I can make do when need be. You can uh, anyone on that list that uh, you uh, you can show them the list. But anyone yeah. on that list, uh, if you want, you can roll a knowledge with advantage because you actually know like you you've heard inklings of these people, so you might have some hidden knowledge about them that no one else does. Anyone you're thinking about in particular for these positions, specifically surgeon, I uh, am the least experienced in that front. Uh, possibly arcanist, although Chick seems to know a lot more than I do about the old arcane. Uh, for the surgeon, I was actually wondering if you had uh, interacted much with Frida Gazimar. Uh, Roll it. With her, advantage? Her abilities seemed quite helpful. 16. Wow, she, that was double 17. Wow. She is the she is known as the pain witch. You uh, all you everyone knows that she does what she does is good work, but boy that that process. The pain witch. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know her. Is that a positive I know or a, a don't bring her on the ship I know or what kind of I know or are we talking? A little of both. She's uh mm -hmm. she's very handy and is very good at uh, what she does, and she is very skillful in her art. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah, it comes at a high cost, I, uh, I had noticed. Yes. Um, how about cooks? Anyone, anyone whose food you particularly like? I've, uh, I've been somewhat taken by Soup Kitchen. He's, he seems to, be a, seems to have a good head bolted on his shoulders. <laughs> Gonna take the advantage on that one. 16 again. 16, uh, you have not had a lot of dealings with him, but you have heard horror stories that there was a sort of automated system that was put into place on a couple of ships that some people have gotten sick even though they have been fed, so it's like, the food's not great, but they've kept afloat. Uh, if you're looking to survive, he'll do the job, but, uh, frankly, I'd sooner eat, you know, raw fish or wood. <laughs> Not a comfort food guy. Got it. And I am <laughs> looking to survive. I wouldn't say it's my highest priority. <laughs> <laughs> Something you're hoping for. Frankly, I, I can't really afford much of the good food around here. I hear the crepe shop's very nice, but I only have five silver to my name. Mm. Interesting. It would Wait, hold on. Did you spend all your money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't see this out of character. What okay. did you spend oh. the cash on? Oh, you've seen my list though. I bought uh, yeah, yeah. I bought two light crossbow pistols. Okay, okay. And ah! <laughs> God damn it! And <laughs> real excited for Devil May Cry Five, aren't we? <laughs> a little. <laughs> it's not Dante though. I got a dagger. He needs to summon a boat first before yes. we get this going. <laughs> I have half plate mail and I have fifty foot of silk rope. This was okay. more for the audience more yeah. than it was myself. <laughs> And trust me, the guns are not the same way as Devil yeah, May Cry guns. Sure. They're different. But what if they could, though? <laughs> I don't think you'd allow it. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> can, I get, can I have semi-auto guns that only I can have? No, I get it. Your two I pistols mean, are legally distinct. I yeah, mean, you, fu you fucking say that, and someone actually gave me a list that is exotic weaponry and shit oh, that, I've, like, I've ex extended that shit. shit. Like, 
and on there is semi-automatic fucking pistol crossbows. It's actually in the Dungeon Master's Guide. There's, yeah. There's something for semi-automatic pistols. Although, I will admit, one thing that did pique my interest is maybe getting one of them blessed with Radiant, one of them blessed there with Necrotic, but I'll, I'll I, wait until mm, I have the gold okay. for it. But a little Ebony and Ivory up here. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> a little, little, little Hall and Oats. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, um, Simon and Garfunkel, Bert yeah. Journey. <laughs> Waller Saloff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike Slaplaza and Rich Evans. <laughs> uh, I, it, from what I understand, you did, at least even if it was to deceive her, you did meet Charlotte uh, Jillies, I assume, earlier today. <laughs> Not much, frankly. Uh, that was mostly, I, I will admit, fully, that was chick. <laughs> yes, Vintier. Yes, at my behest, shut up. <laughs> Look, I needed to get that audience. I'll be, look, uh, this this whole situation I have here has been going on for quite a while. And uh, when I heard that there were three men who made audience with three pirate lords, including one uh, Miss Zalcel, uh, she has a situation very similar to mine. And I thought, you know, getting in close with those people might get me closer to her and I could ask her a few things about what's happening here. And cause I, I'm not entirely sure what's happening, but he does not play nice when I sleep. Hmm, I see. Well, this does this does segue pretty, pretty well into the other concern I had, which was, since you're one of us, I might as well just divulge this to you, and since we're both talking here. We, we clearly have offers from both the pirates and the Navy. Yes, I've, 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 taken, I've gathered that <laughs> since uh, you, you, you I, I mean, I've heard whispers of your crew around town just, off and end, and uh, you see Nedra just running around the corner. Mr. Gore! And she goes and hugs him. Yeah, and uh, that beast of a man, Gore, seems to speak nothing but high regards towards the natural wonders, as I've heard. And we've got nothing but good to say about him. Yeah, Let me true. tell you. It's true. We do Na Navy as an organization, I don't know, but him? Oh, he's the best. I like you. You're charming. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're going to fit in just fine. But yes, I. Uh, Frankly, if you were to hire me, I would be a fool not to accept. I would waive all pay, and at the end of the day, you know, just pay me what you feel I'm worth. I still have very high hopes that you'll pay me greatly, but... <laughs> well, fortunately for me, Pontiff already said he was paying for you or <laughs> for you for, for Very you to true, so mission. let's consider this a trial run, <laughs> yeah, so to speak. Yeah, no, that's, that's how I was looking at it. You were... Oh, well, you know, the like killing an assassin who's trying to assassinate a king. That's a good trial. Yeah. That's a good trial run for me. Look, I've, I've lived a very weathered life. <laughs> it's, I'm uh, just looking to settle down, kill a few assassins, rescue a few kings, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Noble, humble goals. Just a, yeah. just a, just a humble little life. Good have, for my, you to, have, have my peace and just... <laughs> it's good for you to start small so you can just expand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, unfortunately, I know, uh, but, you know, I no longer have a ship to my name, so gathering my own jobs is a little difficult. I can... I can understand how that would be a bit of a burden, um, but it seems it sounds to me like your your interests lie in us signing with the with the pirates, if possible. And I'll be honest, when thinking about it, that's that's the direction I was thinking. But I would I would hate to make such a decision, Eloy. Do you have any huge concerns? Could could we speak privately for a moment? Absolutely. I will, uh... The, meanwhile, there's yeah. Char just sitting there, like, looking at you this whole time, just, like, laughing at you. So did you get in trouble? Fucking, you know I did. I go walk <laughs> over and talk to Char. <laughs> Remember AJ? Yeah. He's given me, like, mild AJ vibes. Except... <gasps> whoa! Ow! Fucking whoa! Except every time I would start to get real sore at AJ, he would just double down, and this guy seems to know when to, when to <laughs> dial it back. And it makes me wonder... Could AJ have been doing that the whole time, and we could have been friends? Very possible. Was he choosing to be an asshole? I think, the, uh, here's the thing, uh, this was a lesson I was taught many years ago. <laughs> a bard once said, it takes just as much energy to be a nice man as it does to be an asshole. So why not use that energy to be the nice guy? And I, I, think, that, I think that's what uh, our friend Dagon over here is at least trying to do when he notices it. I mean, I appreciate the effort is what I'm saying. There you go. Might be some... I don't know. I, I, I gotta be honest, there might be some some friction, but I think we can get past it. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then I, then I think we'll be all right. 
we resume sort of like a neutral stance, clearly able to talk again. Oh, look, I, I, it appears they're ready for me now. <laughs> hey, come on back. <laughs> Just poke my head out. You're, you're good now. <laughs> I told you I'd pay you back when I get the money. Anyway. <laughs> Nothing but good things, I hope. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Actually, it was, it was very positive, and uh, it's, it's sounding like things are going to work out with us. Excellent. W- wonderful, wonderful. Um, and, uh, and I believe we are, we are more or less settled on uh, also being able to hopefully get you closer with the pirate you're hoping to speak to, because uh, th- things are looking like that is going to be where we'll be getting our ship. That would be wonderful. Um, so that's something you're going to have to do. Then you're going to have to go back to, uh, go back to Mead's ship yes. and speak to them about that. Yeah, and that was going to be my, my plan for, for after this. So I would be inviting Dagon to... We're, we're going to probably go through town to ch- and get to, uh, get to the ship where we'd be meeting uh, said pirates. So soon. Well, um... <laughs> All right. Yeah, a little late for a shave, whatever. <clears throat> Looking at a puddle in the floor with a pigeon sitting in it. <laughs> yeah, just kind of licks his... Licks his uh... There we go. Yeah, they go up in flames. Uh, <laughs> one question... Uh, the lady pirate lord in question, is she, um, she hot? (laughs) In the literal sense, or? I'm going to roll an insight and see if, uh, see if I can tell, one, what kind of man Dagon is, and two, if this pirate lord would be, uh, in line with what he's looking for. Uh, that will debate on what you roll for this one. Well, I got a nat 20, 20, so. so. (laughs) Uh, Okay. And it was insight. Claim your intentions now. (laughs) What kind of lady are you looking for? It's not so much the lady he's looking for. He's just looking for a lady. Okay. (laughs) Uh, he's, he's, he seems to be a bit of a player, so to speak. Okay. A woman. And if it were not for the fact that he was attached to a slimy toad Aboleth looking sword, he'd probably be a little better off that than if he wasn't sleeping in a cabin with eight other dudes side mm-hmm. to side. No, that can that can keep it, that can cramp the uh, cramp the old romance. Hang on, keep it down. I'm trying to sleep. Shut up. Do you know how do you know how much talking I had to do to get this to happen? <laughs> <laughs> I left my entire sock drawer on that doorknob. <laughs> Respect the doorknob. <laughs> Respect the rules we signed in agreements. <laughs> oh yeah, she's. I think you'll like her. Excellent. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, well then. Just kind of streaks his hair back. Uh, I think, I think we probably... Cast prestidigitation and like cleans himself <laughs> up. <laughs> Smells a little better. <laughs> We'd probably start heading in that direction then just to make sure things were... But Eloy, what would you like to do now that you know that you have two days to prepare? Yes. So, uh, Captain, all right. So I got... I, I feel bad because I know we got so much to do, but I still haven't seen any of my people, and I gotta let I gotta let the Bard's College know that we're gonna need to make this test with less practice than I'd hoped. Mm. Oh, so you're going to the college? Yeah, yeah. I got. Oh, look, I got I got a badge. Look at you. Yeah, I got I got the one, and I, I'm I'm looking to to try and get another. Although, oh boy, I, I met that headmaster, and he is he is nobody to trifle with. I Dig I got on. in a little bit of practice with Scrung last night, but. I don't know. I just gotta hope it's enough. I don't know this Scrung, but I'm sure he's wonderful to practice with. Yes. Oh, you'll get a lot. Roll of me a knowledge check. With advantage or just in general? Not just in general. Okay. 18. Wow. 18. For my dump stat, that's pretty <laughs> fucking good. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know that based on a lot of ways that the bards work, and especially with like knowing someone like uh, Bout Montgomery. Uh, Montgomery Bout, uh, who's also one of the people who are on the list. Uh, these guys can make some killer bank if proper, if properly put together. Like, someone with enough badges and enough sense for marketing themselves as a bard, you could walk away with a huge profit. I'm looking to get one of those things. <laughs> Man, with a... Hmm, with enough of those badges and enough clout to your name, you can make quite a bit of coin if you decide to put on a show of sorts. I mean that's that's the idea. Well, that's that's half the idea. I don't know. I, I leave the I leave the coin talk to the captain. <laughs> a wise man. Yes. And with you, uh, I need you to roll me a knowledge check as well. Uh, bu- 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 uh, eighteen. Eighteen. 
coming up on the idea that he is getting his second badge, that also is another way that if you really want to put together the uh, Lockwood Natural Wonders as an actual show, with more clout within the Bard's College, more of those institutions spread rumors out across the world. Yeah. So the more badges he gets, the more people actually will seek you out for that. So getting him these badges might be a good chance for you guys to even like start investing and making coin and making yourselves more of a marketable presence. Yeah. No, absolutely. We we definitely want you to get your badge. That that is also a huge part of our journey. We've been seeing seeing you through all these colleges. All right. I just I hate to I hate to pile on two more things onto our, our long list of priorities, but... That's why I gave you two days. Yep. <laughs> like I said, it's early in the morning. You were, you were half asleep just... earlier in this meeting. <laughs> day's just starting. We got plenty of time. All right, all right. I thank you, Sarah. I appreciate it. No problem. Look, I know I just got here, but consider today all about you, friend. I'm just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dagon, you're so polite. In, somewhere in the back of Eloy's mind, a little AJ meter drops just a little more. <laughs> You know, guy that you'd turn in for a seven million dollar, seven million gold bounty. <laughs> okay, guy. <laughs> uh, I try not to step on as many toes as possible, especially living amongst eight men. Oh, God, the smell. So, uh, you, which do you actually want to do first? Um, which is closer to us right now? Uh, the Barge College is closer. You would actually have to leave right to go see the other, uh, the other. Uh, the uh, donkey tribe. Okay, let's let's hit up the Barge College first, then. Alrighty, because yeah, the, it's that. Then it's on the way to uh, the back to your house, and then back to the ship. We get okay. to pick up my bindle. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys on the first stop of the day, you guys head over to the Barge College. Uh, you you see that gnome fella again. He's just sitting there, just like, oh hey, what's up? Hi, I'm I'm back. I oh boy, I was I was. I was hoping to schedule my my test. Oh, you want to do it quickly, huh? You must be really confident. Yes, I am very confident. I'm trying to put on a brave face. <laughs> Rolling deception. <laughs> I roll an eight. This man is a man that you don't want to trifle with, let me tell you. I'll assist. <laughs> uh, with a 18. If I'm deceiving, or if you just want me to be uh, persuasion, then yeah, that persuasion would be, works. Like you, you uh, didn't persuasion, have to do, uh, persuasion. Then it's a fifteen. I, I'd imagine you, like, if you didn't want to do deception, you could also do persuasion. Yeah, no, e Eloy honestly is not super confident, so okay, okay, so it would be deception. Then mine would be persuasion at a fifteen. Well, it's the early in the morning. Everyone's like <laughs> getting their shit done. He's yeah. he's just like, okay, well, uh, if you step inside, you can register yourself for a day, and we can have it set up. How much of a rush can we put on it? It turns out we got press and business, and I'm only going to be in town two more days. Well, we're probably not going to get it done today. We can probably get it done tomorrow. All right. Yeah. No, that works. Th thank you, and thank no, you. So normally, much. that that's the whole point of these trials when you're on the uh, when you're on the travelers uh, when you're on the travelers uh, when you're on a traveling coin. Normally, they do it the day of if you were so to choose so. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I've been. I've been hoping to get just a little more practice in, but, you know, duty calls, so we, we got to make this happen. All righty. We can have it set for tomorrow afternoon, then. All right. Th thank you, sir. All right. Uh, the money, please. Oh, right. How much was it again? Ten grand. Can you float me like two grand, Captain? Can I? Yes, I can. What a generous group. <laughs> can you float me ten grand? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a drink of ale in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just watching these two just like passing cash around like it's candy. Of course, Eloy, nothing's too expensive for my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, I've got this giant honking diamond, but that's uh, that's spell components, not spending money. No, I get you. <laughs> and also, Gore gave you guys 10 grand as well. Yeah. Well, no, 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 that's, I'm correction. He was going to give you 10 yeah, grand. Yeah, he was planning on yeah. it. Yeah. Wait, I'm confusing myself. I have it in my notes right here. He gave you the 10 grand yeah, for to, the, for... to, to make up for the Yeldon's cost. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. If, if that's the case, yeah, just take the two grand out of my share of that, and it'll, it'll all work out. All right, cool. So you pass along the money. Everyone kind of like, now everyone's kind of like whispering because they actually see the cash like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. 
He's going to get fucking slaughtered. By the way, for the record, Wake never took a share of that. I never wrote any of it down, so... Either I, either Ezra or Eloy would have been split among those two. Mm. All right, at that point, you're at the Bard's College. You, you've, you've set yourself up. You have a... You have a Yo Mama fight set up for next <laughs> week, uh, next uh, morning or next afternoon. I don't usually hang around this district very much. I drank at the tavern once or twice, but if you get into an argument with one of those people, you end up with a bloody nose, and not for the same reason that you'd expect. You see, yes. Slan you see Slander McBroad. Uh, yeah, Slander Mc Broadway oh, McSlander. You see Broadway <laughs> McSlander just like walk by and look at you. Oh God, that's him. Puts his shades down. You Lord just nods respectfully. <laughs> Apparently, that's the guy he has to make fun of tomorrow. Yeah, don't argue with him. He's a rough one. <laughs> I, oh, trust me, I know. I, I'm, I'm going to try my very best, Captain. I was, I was feeling real confident with pistachio. I knew I had something special there. This time, I don't know, it might be touch and go, but I'll do my very best. Eloy, I just want to say that I have the utmost faith in you, and all I want from you is for you to do your best. Roll me another, uh, in, roll me another I intelligence check, Dagon. Zero! Natural zeros! <laughs> what? I have a negative one, so a natural one is a zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> okay, okay, so it's a modified zero then. Yeah, Get modified zero. Yeah. <laughs> Unnatural zero. Unnatural zero. <laughs> All righty, so at this point... It was bound to happen. <laughs> All right, at this point, you guys can pretty much head on over to the... Uh, you can pretty much can go anywhere or talk to anyone that you've seen on that list or anyone mm -hmm. you want to speak to in your party. But beyond that, you can head on over to uh, you can head on over to the ship, but that will cost like a couple of hours of travel. Um, bef before we head that way, I know we were going to swing by and pick up his stuff. Uh, the crepe shop, where would that be in relation? Oh, you just well, like probably like a half hour's walk away back into the market district. You know what? To, to celebrate this 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 chance meeting that has actually turned out to possibly be a great uh, you know opportunity for both of us. Couldn't let's, agree. Mo couldn't agree more. Let's celebrate with some sweets. You said you mentioned crepes earlier. His stomach kind of grumbles. Yes, 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 I did. <laughs> Eloy, it was you who shared that crepe with me, right? Er earlier. Yeah, yeah it was er real good. Yeah, okay. Then you, let's stop by there. I, I've actually been meaning to talk to Frank Motion a little bit, or Frank Ocean a little bit. Ocean Motion. Ocean Man. Right. Frank. Puts the motion in. Frank Motion yep. oh, of the crepes. Motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, Connor last night couldn't remember the name of a town called Fallwood Barrow, and it was... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys head into the Market District. You uh, you see a couple of folks. Uh, some new folks actually came in from Port. Uh, there's a lot of people going around selling off fish, selling off uh, merchants, some, uh, some uh, other goods. Uh, you actually see a couple of your uh, allies from the Yeldon kind of just walking around doing their own thing. Uh, you, you go up to Frank Motion's uh, crepe shop. You walk inside. There's Frank kind of just like not facing the door, kind of just like... He, he looks like he's idling because standing behind him is Grammy staring at him from behind the counter. That's a creepy woman. Oh, yeah, it's Grammy. She's, she's real. Yeah, that's Grammy. She's not doing anything. She's kind of just like... She's... she's Standing right there with her hands up trying to reach the counter and gripping the counter, you see the cracks from her fingers as and, she's looking at him. And you said Frank is like... Like, hold it, has his back to... Yeah, nervously just like not paying attention to her, just like, okay. oh no, oh no. <laughs> hey, Grammy, what are you doing here? She turns her head to look at, to look at you. Window shopping. Huh. I thank you so much for the save the other day. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, thanks anyway, though. <laughs> <laughs> Grammy, this should is I, Dagon. I was going to say, should I introduce myself? Or, uh... she, she turns and looks to you. Her head turns 180 degrees. <laughs> Dagon uh, Huxley. Da Dagon Huxley. Uh, pleasure to make her, her. Her hand that's clasped on, it's the gold hand. <laughs> She takes your hand and shakes it. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, madam. She's she's grabbing onto it. You feel like the metal and in in dig into your <laughs> into your flesh. Whew, quite the grip you have there. <laughs> Grammy is one. <laughs> well, this is a unique, unique specimen. A unique beauty. Yeah, yes. and de definitely. 
Yeah, she was she was the cook on our on our last ship, but se- seems like she's settling down here to make her fortune. Well, you couldn't have chosen a better city. Mm. So what's your story? Oh, I have many stories, and I'm sure I'd love to. She points up at the sword. How's Chick reacting to her? <laughs> With a nat one. <laughs> this is the first time you've ever heard total silence from your sword. I'm not gonna lie, he's kind of drawing a blank here. Um, you are marvelous to have around, might I say. Um, he, he, this is uh, Griochik, the All Gobbler. Oh, no corrections, amazing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he uh, consumes souls and the like, what, whatever you put in front of him, frankly. Ah, uh, Grammy knows exactly what he's about. I thought you might. Indeed. So, Grammy, you're you're here window shopping. Have you tried one of these crepes before? No! Would you like to? No! Are you sure? It's Look, I understand that you are a master chef. Please, don't, do not take any sort of... Why would that thought ever pass your mind that I was anything beyond that? I'm I'm not saying you are anything less. You are a fantastic chef. However, even the greatest chefs can learn from each other. And if you you would like... (laughs) I will. I am offering to purchase you a crepe. Such a generous offer from this man. It'd be a shame to turn it down. Yes. He's my husband. Well. No, I'm not. I didn't get. I didn't marry. She her. holds your hand up, and the <laughs> ring is there. You remember taking it off. Well, thought, look at that. What? That's impossible. Mazel tov, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> you. What? We but, must get crepes to celebrate this immediately. <laughs> As if you're right. Persuasion. <laughs> uh, modified 20, well, 22. You do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> you do it. She fucking, she, she's, she's just like, I suppose <laughs> if I'm going to be making money, I guess I should at least try the other quizzy. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't say that with a straight face. <laughs> That's the you spirit. You fat orc. You just watch as Frank motion turns his head, just like, Hi, Frank. <laughs> oh, it's the guy who hasn't paid his tab in a month. <laughs> he remembers me. <laughs> I wasn't aware that was a thing, but okay. Uh, Frank, you're... Will you consider your tab clean if you get this thing out of here? Oh, well, well, as soon as we get the crepes, we'll be on our okay. way. Put it on my tab well, that's well, going well, to be clean. What kind of crepes <laughs> would you like? Give me an everything crepe. <laughs> Three of those. <laughs> okay, go. Uh... I'll go ahead and try. <laughs> this poor guy is just... Grammy's watching him this whole time, so he's just fucking getting disadvantages on his fucking performance <laughs> checks. With a nat one. Oh, no! Another nat one! Oh, shit. Frank, you're really letting yourself slip. <laughs> I, I don't... He doesn't normally do this. Maybe we asked for too many ingredients. Well, no, no, probably no, no. He, he begins to try to start putting stuff together. Grammy's gone. She's behind the, the door. She's behind the door of the kitchen looking at him now. I didn't Grammy, please. Grammy, now Grammy, please. We don't let other cooks in on your kitchen when you're when you're trying to prepare something. Please try and give the man his space. Persuasion with advantage. I'm gonna use that advantage, hopefully. No, not that great. Mm-hmm. I didn't but even see her move. That was fascinating. Seventeen. You succeed. All right. You actually, like, this time you actually see her move. She actually just, like, she actually thinks about that. And based on your word alone and how much that actually makes sense, she kind of just, like, looks at herself just like, I'm kind of bound by that wording you just threw at me. <laughs> so she, like, walks behind and she actually, she sits on the, she sits at a chair and actually just sits there patiently waiting. Thank you, Grant. Enough for Frank to continue his work without delay. Frank just looks at you. Thank you. Just imagine looking at herself, what have I become? <laughs> <laughs> How did I grow to be this soft? <laughs> this isn't what I this isn't why I started cooking. <laughs> I guess I've had it good this for this long. <laughs> well, Grammy hasn't considered the needs and necessities to facilitate for others. <laughs> I've opened Grammy's eyes. <laughs> the idea of putting oh, others first. New well. <laughs> <laughs> Never before has she thought of someone before herself. <laughs> and this is the only point in her life where she fucking works. Where it makes sense. <laughs> okay. Frank comes back giving you all crepes. 
uh, for this, I'm going to say that uh, he's going to ask for uh, ten silver from all of you. Hmm. He looks to you before he gives you the crepe. I believe there was something about wiping my tab, sir. <sighs> Persuasion. <laughs> Nat 20. <laughs> he gives you the crepe. Thank you kindly, Frank. E Eloy doesn't make a big deal of it, but he hands him 20 silver when he hands over his. Nice. He, like, looks to you and, like, nods with a really, really nice smile. <laughs> uh, each of you, for the rest of the day, now have a temporary plus one to con. Cool. Grammy. Wow. Grammy's rolling fucking really low today. She's swaying by this crepe. <laughs> <laughs> the texture. Flavor. The flavor. Pretty good, right? Um. Mm, too much banana. I just got a bite with octopus in it. Yeah, it doesn't really mix well with the sausage. It's a tentacle crepe. Everything might not exactly be my take, but this still. was amazing! <laughs> Still clearly a, a... You! He like po She points over to Frank. You have my blessing to feed these people! Yay! That leads into my next question. Quite the accomplishment, Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, we can consider this a, uh, an, a bit of an informal interview with uh, what may be some of your fellow crewmates. Uh, but it's come to my attention that our ship might need a cook. And uh, the other interview I had... Grammy's head turns 180. <laughs> Grammy, I would love to bring you along, but you know the paperwork says no. I hate the paperwork too, frankly. It's, it's I know it's terrible contract suck. <laughs> <laughs> Tell and, me about and it. And if I can't have <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and I don't know if this would be a stealth or a sneak, but I'm but uh, or like what, but uh, I want to make it clear to Frank that I am not like insulting or making fun of him, but basically just going like and if I can't have my first choice, like pointing at Grammy, <laughs> that would be an insight on his check versus your persuasion. Okay. Uh, another seventeen. He catches on. Okay. And if I can't have my first choice, you make a hell of a crepe, and I'm assuming your your other abilities in the kitchen have to be pretty good. I do. I do handle comfort food quite well, but. I could absolutely assist you in any other kind of like recipe you need, as long as I, as long as I have the ingredients and I have the know with all of what I'm actually aiming for when it comes to food, I can make you anything. That's terrific. And uh, if you were to be hired as a as a ship's cook, uh, how much would you charge? Ooh, well, kind of put me on the spot. I didn't quite have my paperwork ready, but I apologize. I know it's. And if you don't have an exact number, that's fine. It's just trying to trying to get a ballpark idea here. I would say three hundred and fifty a week. 350 a week? Not bad. Don't give me that look. You, you know looks... that's more than I make, and you know what I do. Of course I do. That's why I did it. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and look, we've like... already got rapport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people speak about him all the time. Yeah, he's, they he's, do. He seems to get around. I mean, look. The guy's got a lot of flaws. <clears throat> It's so far your sword's not talking because Grammy's there. I'm just imagining like it's just keeping its eye on her. Just Grammy's even like, even, like the, the, even the Quillian that has an eye on just goes. Grammy's got one eye on the sword the whole time. <laughs> I really wish we could take her with us. This would be just wonderful. <laughs> but be that as it may, even though there's a lot of weird things, we may say some unpresentable things when it comes to getting work. Everyone's tried to get work and. Well, we need to all take care of each other. That's true. And we're all in this adventuring group together. Couldn't have said it better myself, Franklin. Rising tide raises all ships, my friends. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you said a thing that was contextual. <laughs> raises a fork with the crepe on it. <laughs> so what do I do? All right, so... With that, you guys all find, found out that his uh, his food pretty much gives you temporary boosts for the day. This, that sounds good yep. <laughs> and very useful. More useful than this 
unfortunately, soup kitchen apparently making people sick on his last trip. <laughs> I so, mean, he, he does what he does. It's just that, again, you yeah. you haven't tasted his food, nor have you given it a shot. So yeah. you don't know what the results are. All right. So you use that to talk to Frank. Mm-hmm. So you got a price, and uh, you got a taste of like what his food ca- is capable of. As for combat, though, that you haven't tested yeah. yet, but he he claims that he's pretty good at handling a weapon, if need mm-hmm. be. All right, and with that, we move on to the pirates. Yes. All right, so a couple of hours have gone by. You now know what it's like to eat again after a couple of days. <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't know if I said this properly yet or not, but thank you. I... <laughs> Oh, God, just to be digesting again. Fisnifrar. You can deal. Oh. He's talking again. It's great. I was, I was going to say, it sounds like your friend has uh, got his tongue back. Yeah, it's wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> as you guys are walking, you actually notice that as you're going past your house, there's Mr. Large holding, like, two buckets on a stick walking down the street. Patching a wall. He turns and looks to you and holds up a little... He holds up, like... A uh, little, the, you know, the little, uh, not the spatula, the the, the spatula. Yeah, I, I know. What you, yeah, the thing you lay mortar with. Yeah, he he like looks to you. He pulls it out of the bucket and he goes. Mm. Yeah, it's a little drafty last night. Does he live here too? Him? Oh no, not there. He he makes enough money to live on his own. You want to roll a knowledge check? Sure. Is this with advantage or just normal? Uh, advantage. Okay, uh, that's a 14 then. <laughs> you know that Mr. Large does a lot of odd jobs to get by. His brother is a lot more, uh, his brother has a lot more, uh, like, knowledge and a lot more, uh, a lot more book smarts, whereas him, he's just more simple and he likes to keep jobs that keep his hands from being idle. Yeah, he's a handy man. He goes around. He actually built his own house mm. and his brother. Sounds rather handy. Yes, quite. <laughs> Uh, Quiet sort, though. Not, he not, actually, much, not much for talk. He actually looks over to you. He actually sees you, as and he sees uh, you, Eloy. And he like looks. He actually looks to you, and he go. He points over to Ezra. Yeah. I'm still putting the crew together, but you are definitely on the short list of people who I'm who I'm who I'm thinking of bringing. <laughs> Holds up an OK sign. For yeah. those listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> but for the pu- for people who are listening in, Mr. Large is a silent character, which I'm just like, <laughs> fuck, that's going to be difficult for you a lot of people. Descri- you just got to describe his emotions. gesticulation. Yeah, yeah. Un- unless you've got someone who speaks goblin. <laughs> Unfortunately, nope. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what languages Chick knows, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that, uh, Mr. Large, Mr. Large kind of like hands you actually a small little stone that he carved out of the wall. Oh. Uh, it, it is a piece of wall that came out of your house. Oh, fancy that. I've stared at that on the other side for so long. You look at the... Uh, do you want to investigate the stone? I do. Uh, 14. That's sorbent ore. Hmm. Gives off a nasty glow at night. Kind of hard to sleep, frankly. I'm going to do a knowledge check on sorbent ore and see how much I know about it. It's that stuff we grabbed from... Oh, uh, well, the stuff. Okay, got it, yeah. yeah. It's the stuff that if you heat underwater, it yeah, turns the... into a strong metal. Okay. It's huh. like ice cream, but doesn't... It... Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is... so he... Your house he... is made of this stuff? Yeah, apparently... Yeah, a lot of the buildings are. Yep, yeah. apparently you found out your foundation is made of this stuff. Fascinating. It's really hard to break. I'm frankly surprised that it happened. But that also begs the question, how is he going to, like, submerge this and then mold it into the metal? You know what? The ways of the craftsman were never my ways, and I don't <laughs> question it. All right. So with that, uh, you walk past Mr. Large, and you guys head outside towards the district. There are parrots and uh, other creatures just outside near the coastline, kind of, like, just walking about or, like, living their lives there's a monkey sitting there with a with a rock bashing it against a crab. It looks to you. It looks at Eloy. Hi. Throws the rock at him. Whoa, hey! Eloy attempts to dodge. Acrobatics. All right. Uh, 17. It misses completely. 
It like it actually lands in front of you, so you don't have to like dodge that far. Okay. It's like it, it looks at you and goes. <laughs> it like picks up the crab and throws it at you. Stop it! Hey, quit it! Do you know it this misses? Monkey? I, it misses. As far as I know, I don't know any monkeys. A gun appears from my sleeve, and I shoot the monkey. Whoa! Hey. Uh, with a twenty-five to hit. That will hit. Okay. I uh, believe that is six damage. Yeah, yeah, plus dex. There we go. Monkey just falls over. Was that thing bothering you? Oh, I'm, I mean, yes, but that may have been a little extreme, Dagon. Sorry, sorry. It just seemed very violent. and. I mean, you're right. It was being... He just kind of pushes the gun back into his <laughs> leaf. <laughs> was being oddly <laughs> aggressive, but... You know, perhaps, perhaps not lethal force is necessary immediately. I was aiming for the leg, but I don't think that that would have served the creature much better than it's dying. It's not bleeding. It's not bleeding? That's odd. Um, I go over and investigate the, yeah. this monkey. All right. Uh, how do you wish to investigate? I'm going to do a medical check. All right. Roll me a medical. 19. 19? Now, it would be fine in theory to check what exactly is going on with this thing if it wasn't hollow on the inside. That explains these, why Chick's not going nuts. Are these why? Is, are these what monkeys are like out here and I just don't know their anatomy? I or? don't know. I've never shot one. I I was only like half and half sure this even was a monkey until you started calling it one. i never seen one up close before. It slowly lurches up. Should I shoot it again? I, I feel like this the is... The hole is closing. N Neat? Chick, you have any insight on this? I, I've, I've got absolutely no yes, fucking... Yes, 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 yes. All right, He's claiming mostly... it's soulless. All right, that was mostly gibberish, but he says it's hollow and does not have a soul. Okay, well, in that case, I guess we could... Well, I, I was about to say I guess we could shoot it, but that didn't seem to fix it the first time. No, not really. Hi. Are you boys done? You, hear, you two hear a familiar voice. You want to I roll mean, I mean, I guess this You want to roll a knowledge check to remember who it is? Twelve. Six. I mean, I guess this thing you was just being a little violent. You remember a certain funny guy who was quite humorous, indeed, back at Jahal Cove. Funny guy from Jahal Cove. God, that was a million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost Done a with, year ago. I turn around and look at the <laughs> There's no one there. Go to face the voice. Oh. There's no one there. The voice is not there. Wait a minute. Uh, what are you rolling? I'm rolling perception. Okay. 17? 17. 17. Uh, there looks like a skull sitting next to a rock in the sand. That was it, right, Chick? Yeah, that was it. Excuse me, are you a skeleton? I rightly would be. Hmm. Mr. Rattles, is that you? You watch as, like, the, the sand, like, parts up, and he stands up in a suit as he's, like, brushing himself off. Yep, that's me, boys. How was, how's it been? Hey, getting out and uh, sun bleaching the bones? What's, what's, what's happening? Ah, it's uh, good to be a sentry every once in a while. You don't want to be stuck in the inside looking at books all the time. That's true. I got a 13 on my knowledge check. Would my knowledge of the pirates let me know, like, it, something about a skeleton traveling with a crew? Uh, you know that someone on a pirate crew has dabbled in necromancy, so this seems to be up and up. You've, you've heard inklings, but you've never actually seen someone just straight up be a necromancer or a lich just walk about a ship. I'll be honest, I'm a little taken aback. Um, oh, oh, you, I... you, you seem acquainted. Uh, Huxley, Dagon Huxley. Ah! How you doing, kid? Mr. Rattles, he, like, grabs your hand. You're, again, it's pointy bones. <laughs> mm, yes, more of this today. Yes, hello. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. He looks spooky, but, well, I mean, you look spooky, too. You should get along. I've, I've, I've heard. I've been, I've been practicing. I've been practicing that mending that you taught me, and I, I, I got it down real good. Oh, you actually did it, huh? Yeah! Oh, that's fantastic. And, uh, so you, you're going to have to tell me a little bit about what you boys have been up to, but uh, I imagine you're here for a purpose. Yeah, we were actually coming in to, to, to speak with Mead, particularly. Uh, he, he had talked about getting us a ship. Ah, so you're actually thinking about joining us, huh? It's looking that way, yeah. Ah, great. 
Uh, you listen. work with Mead. Oh yeah, the, who's this guy, by the way? I, I just introduced myself. To oh no, no, I, I know, Sorry. but I need to know if you're on the up and up. I trust these two a little bit more. F- fair enough. He's with us. He's uh, he's he's going to be part of our crew. Hmm. Pleasure. Well, you know what? That's to be fair. There's a lot of folks who uh, work in the Fortune Tide that are under our employment, like uh, Rissfend, uh, yeah, like Rissfend uh, Pliskin. Oh, the little dragon boy. Yes. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a uh, you know that guy Father Dorn walking around. Yeah. He's one of us too. My God. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of folks that you've seen around town that uh might be working with us or some uh, with I've, us in some regard. I've had some friends I hear rumors, but I, I... That's good, as long as they remain rumors, right? Absolutely. <laughs> never never confirmed. Excellent. I, like, pat you on the back. <laughs> well, I'm going to feel a little over my head. Yes. Now, well, Dagon, you'll, well, you'll be it, meeting plenty of interesting and weird characters, but don't you worry, you're going to fit right in. It's going to be fine. Excellent. And, we, uh... You we boys even met a fawn girl once, yeah. and she wasn't the worst. <laughs> He has this thing with Vaughns. They have bad, <laughs> bad experiences. I've never... I, they're like deer? Yeah. I don't really... Never met one. Yeah, they're, they're like deer, but not the worst. Okay. It was weird for me, too. Oh, I can't fucking wait till later. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't fucking wait! It's gonna be great. All right. Uh, Mr. Rattles brings you over to the... Uh, brings you down the, down the road. Uh, you keep going off the path. You go off to the uh, ocean. You guys don't see anything. You two know that this place is covered by a buoy that is uh, has a uh, illusion spell over it. Yeah. By the way, you're just standing there as now a fucking skeleton in a suit is like ushering you over towards the ocean. I can live with it. Don't worry. Just, uh, it's, a, it's a little magic trick. Just, just trust him. Oh, the water holds no dangers for me, I assure you. He opens, he uh, looks up, he kind of like opens his mouth like a Pez dispenser, and you watch as a purple light beams out. He, le- he lets out like this ghoulish little laughter. Plenty of surprises, though. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and you never that, really you get watch totally as, like, used to the, it. Her, like, the picturesque view of the ocean kind of fades away, and there's now three ships sitting in the way. There you go. Do I recognize any of the flags? Roll me a knowledge with advantage. Anyone in particular you're looking to uh, seek for? Uh, obviously Zaslamel. Uh, I got a 12. Uh, you've never seen them before in your life, but based on the uh, picturesque view of the flag that you're looking at, that's Zaslamel's flagship. My goodness. I told you we'd probably get close. Yeah, I just didn't imagine it'd be so soon. Well, <clears throat> that's that's what you can expect from the natural wonders. We get results and we get them quick. They walk you on board. Everyone's kind of just like, hey, like cheering ah! you as you go in. There's the Gimme Brothers. There's they Timothy. Love me here. <laughs> Timothy, Abigail, uh, Mary, and Harros. You said the Gimme Brothers were here, right? Yes. Uh, I I kind of like pointed like, hey. Do you think you could get me some more explosive bolts before we head out in a day? What's it going to cost you? Or I was going to ask what your rates were going to be. I know it's a bit of a traveling fee, so I, uh, I assume there's going to be an added expense. But You see Rattles kind of like just like knock you in the kneecap with his staff. Like, <laughs> not now, not now. We can talk about that afterwards. Fine. <laughs> so he takes you inside uh, once again to the captain's quarters. There's... Uh, there's Mead, uh, Zaslamel, and, uh, Lot sitting there. Ah, boys, welcome back. Hi. Ahoy there. Who's uh, this? As uh, Lot's looking at... Lot, you now watch as, like, this slumped over, like, drunken-looking tabaxi kind of, like, lifts his hat up. Who's this? Uh, a pleasure to meet you. My name's, uh, Huxley. Dagon Huxley. Uh, they know me as the Wraith of Ibracol. Oh, you're that guy that everyone keeps talking about. We were thinking you were that boy who's actually, uh... Death's son or something? I don't know. Uh, n- n- not, not quite. Uh, I can, oh, good. I, can I hate see, that I can... guy. He's a rat bastard. He's a bit of a prick. I, I, I will admit. Uh, definitely a soft touch, but I'm, I'm glad to know that my uh, like, name is floating around the right circles. Roll a, uh, roll a dexterity check as he throws... He, like, slides a, a mug of grog at you. Dex check is a 15. Yep. Uh... <laughs> Ooh. You catch it just in case. Well, have at it then. The three, the both of you roll as well. Mm, two. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, modified 20. 
22. All right, both of you catch you with ease. That's uh, hopefully a blossoming friendship. Definitely. Yep, they hold it up and clack. <laughs> My cup's empty. <laughs> All right, boys, enough pleasant trees, as you see as uh, Mead is sitting there taking a goblet of wine and puts it down. That's Captain Mead. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I see uh, one, of your, uh, fe- one of your fellow new crewmates, I assume? Yeah, uh, he had more knowledge than most of the other crewmates I've interviewed. He uh, may be helping out with some of the vampire stuff. Ah, excellent. Long story short, uh, it, it's a complicated situation, but uh, I, I hear that your lordships were willing to help us in some way, shape, or form. Lordships? Well, your pirate lords, correct? Son, that's quite a title. We've never heard that before. I'm sorry. Just, I, thank you for the pleasantry. Is that what we're aboard now, one of the lordships? I, I believe Ooh. so. <laughs> she sees Aslam, I'll just sit there just like thinking of that to herself. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> as like her hair flares up a little bit in flame as she takes a, as she takes a swig. Always happy to make a lady smile. Gives a little grin and uh, takes a sip. Ah, <laughs> uh, you. <laughs> However, in order for us to, to go on our journey, we will need a vessel. And originally the Navy had offered us something, but the, the more we've talked to you, the more- The I- moment you say that, they all just stop and look at you with dead eyes. But the more we've talked to you, the more I've realized that the safer bet is the pirates. Well, safer might not be the right uh, right choice of word. You're a more dangerous choice, but I think the right choice. Now, you say that, son, as Mead kind of like sits up sternly and like kind of Ikari poses as he looks at you. Do you have, do each of you have a proper reason for wanting to join us? I'd like to hear at least the lot of yours thoughts on our organization. In my dealings with the Navy, though they've, though they've definitely been good members of the Navy within, their, their general opinion of, of how science and technology should be used, I, I strongly disagree with. Uh, on top of that, you're looking to, the, the way you guys are looking to stop the you know, potential resurgence of an onrush, all of your methods have made far more sense to me than, than what the Navy has been doing. And I just, I have not, I've not agreed with their methods or, nor their mentality on the situation, and I feel like it is better sooner rather than later that I start making sure that I'm friends with the people who I agree with. Hi, Captain. Thank you very much for your, in, for your input. Mr. Eloy, how do you feel? I mean, those are some big ideas, and I don't know that I rightly have an opinion as far as that goes, but... These vampires have been coming after us and coming after us, and now they got one of our friends, or what's left of them. And look, nobody likes the vampires. Navy don't like them neither. But we showed up here, and the first thing y'all did was give us information and, and a plan to help. And that's what I'm on board for. Well said. You like logical thinking. We like... We didn't expect that from you, Mr. <laughs> Eloy. You, like, hey, Lot, Lot just like stops and goes, I did not expect that from you, of all people. <laughs> Nobody does. He's a still pond that runs deep, as I'm trying, to, as I'm <laughs> discovering. Yeah, ever since I saw these two back at, uh, at Bullcard, I've... You, you're quite the enigma. Not even my R&D boys could figure you out. And you, Mr. Dagon? Uh, Dagon's been sitting here uh, realizing that he stumbled onto something a lot bigger than he imagined, (laughs) and it started off with him trying to stop an assassination of a king. So hearing about this onrush stuff... um, uh, You look a little... Yeah, so I'm going to roll insight real quick. Are you trying to hide it? Sure, yeah, I'm definitely trying to hide it. With a deception check of 21. Lot sees right through you. Well, frankly, I... uh, I've been on the wrong side of the law for a good portion of my life. Uh, you see Lot playing with a coin through his fingers. Who hasn't? Exactly. You make the coin where you can, and some people don't like the way you do it. I, I can't agree with that. So, but is your heart in the right place, Mister Dagon? I like to believe so. I don't like to kill if necessary. I, well, Zaslamel kind of like spurks. 
even if it means you got uh, a little piece of Gryloteth on the back of your shoulder right there. So you are the one I'm looking for. Have you ever heard of a monster called Yugathoya? I can't say that I have. Have you heard of this Griochik? <laughs> kind of hesitant. He's like, we don't like to talk about that thing. Oh, wow. A little short on words. It's very rare for him. Well, the mead kind of like looks like he's shrinking when he hears that as well. That's the result of Barnacle Bay. Okay, never mind. We're moving on. Check. I understand. <laughs> uh, but yes, I, I, I'm simply trying to make my coin where I can, and you know, if I can do some good for the world, why not? There's no harm in it, and if there's coin in it, even better. Hmm. Spoken like a true privateer, Mister Dagon. Hmm. Captain Ezra, do you feel that this lad is quite well and ready to assist us in you-know-what? If there's something I need to leave the room for, I completely understand. Oh, no. If, if, he, if I'm going to take Captain Ezra's word here on this one, if he feels you're capable of being able to know about our bigger goal, then I assume that Mr. Ezra will be glad to speak of your behalf. If there's one thing I trust myself on, Captain, it's a judgment of people and character. And upon meeting this man, he told me great tales. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that not only will he be a, a trustworthy member of this crew, but an invaluable asset to our journey. I see. Dagon's I've never actually heard that said about him. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, you killed me on that insight check. And so now Ezra's just like, this guy's amazing. And I will say for the fact, like, the fact that these people are regarding you in such high regard, like, Dagon is, literally has, like, insane respect levels for you. <laughs> uh, roll a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, there we go. Uh, 26. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, uh... The, the three of them kind of like look to each other and nod. Well, welcome aboard to the Grand Design Pirates. Mm, pirates life for me, I suppose. Indeed. Now, which flag would you like to be represented under? Now, I wouldn't mind in saying that I'd be a little remorse if you didn't pick me, considering our history, boys. He, uh, Mead says with a little bit of a giggle. <laughs> and then Lotch is sitting there just like... <laughs> Well, to be fair, uh, Mead, you it looks, looks over a lot. Now, our, lot, our business was, was fine and dandy and have zero complaints. But Mead, it's honestly all because of you that we've been on this path, and I feel like it only makes sense for us to fly your flag. All right, boys. Unless anyone else has any objections, this is a democracy. It is. Well, that's news to me. Well, I have a, uh, here's, we'll have it like this, Mr. Eloy. For those who would like to be under my flag, stomp and shout I, and those who oppose, wimp a nay. The fact that uh, Ezra was the <laughs> one that pitched it, Dagon goes with him. Aye! <laughs> Aye. We have an accord. You will be flying under my. You will be flying under my flag, boys. Now about your ship. We can't get it to you as uh, we can get you a junk as soon as possible. It can house about eight people. All right. Unfortunately, that's all we can spare at the moment. Understandable. However, uh, we. However, I understand that not wanting to show your face around the navy in the port of Wright would probably be the best solution. We will have the flag. However, we will ask that you at least be a little bit more cordial about throwing out our flag when you're around any naval or civilian ports. Oh, absolutely. I was I'm assuming it's more of a bartering ship, yes? You do have a separate flag that you could run, say, on your way to and from places? Yes, definitely. I, I hope you take no offense, Mead, but you're correct. If, if I was flying your flag, especially in naval populated areas, it might not only become dangerous for us, but bad for your reputation, and I would want Aye. neither to happen. Aye. And uh, 
As for you, Lot, he turns and looks to Lot, and Lot looks at him, like, slobberingly, just like, what? You've seen their flag once before, yes? Oh, yeah. I once thought they were trying to run out the Fine Day Boardwalk Company. No, uh, that entertainment little bit that they tried to pull. Does a little wink. <laughs> we, we wouldn't dare try and compete with the best in town. <laughs> That's right, you don't. But, be that as it may, if they're at least going to be assisting us in the grand design, then I can let my boys know in the R&D department to make sure that everyone outside the South Seas knows that the Lockwood Natural Wonders are okay in our book, and they're allowed to make port whenever they see fit. You, you honor me, sir, with your, with your kind words. Yeah, I do. And Zaslamel looks out, uh, looks over to the three of you. As for me, well, I'm gonna have to take care of this rum blood stuff. Unfortunately, uh, with all the lamprey that's been going around now, they're making a little bit too much of a noise, and I'm gonna have to take care of that. He's speaking of the orphans. Indeed. Looks like the rum bloods have uh, the rum bloods. Unfortunately, were being targeted by the lamprey dogma. And unfortunately, we're trying to put a hold on that situation. A couple of our ships have been taken down, and we don't know where the captain is. Nor do we know where the other two captains are that are closer to Avast and Eel's Gape. My lady, if I may be so bold, um, I, I would never speak for the captain, of course, but if you have any known locations for these vessels that you might happen to want to be searched, I'm certain if it were on our way, we'd be able to provide some assistance. Maybe not towards Ibrakal, but of course, certainly, if you can find anything off the island, that would be most helpful. There's plenty of small little bits of the archipelago that you could search. Is there a way to contact you should we find something and need to deliver it to your ears alone? She looks over to your hex blade. Chick. Mm, I believe there might be a way. May I have it? Please. Shink. <laughs> Hands it over. It's this curved looking, half scimitar looking blade. Is there any uh, downside to anyone else grabbing your blade? No, just if it gets more than 20 feet away from me, it teleports back to my back. Okay. Like the pa blade packed dealy. You watch as she pulls out her scimitar. It doesn't have a face or anything on it. It just looks like a straight up regular scimitar. However, when she takes it, she like, she pushes it down, it starts to shrink itself down to the form of a dagger. This might pinch a little chick. Good old chick. She etches her name in Infernal throughout the line of the blade. You actually hear your, you, you hear your sword cry out in agony and only you can hear it. Mm. It's, it's cursing so many fucking things at her. Mm. And, and you guys don't hear a damn thing. You hear like almost like a dog whistle kind of thing where it's like barely any noise. <laughs> I just and assume, and, and I assume it's the heat of the blades touching or whatever. Yep, and Zaslamel's just sitting there just like, oh, sweetheart, I've been called worse. <clears throat> do I take any damage from this? No, you do not. Okay, no damage from this mental link. Cool, good to know. You, She hands you back the sword, and her blade returns back to its normal size as she sheaths it. Ah, oh, shut the fuck up, chick. <laughs> <laughs> take it like a man, stiff up a lip. Mm. Well, now that <sighs> I've marked your little friend here. I have some form of communication, at least with you, Mr. Dagon. A pleasure. Indeed. Now, if you boys see any of my ships afoot, now, I'm more of a battle person. I, I love combat. I love the thrill of it. If you see my ships sailing about, maybe we might have a little bit of a deal to help you with some equipment. Mm. We could absolutely supply you with anything should you need offense or defense, especially for your ship. That would be great. Thank you so much. I was thinking about some cannons. Like, what this this ship that you were uh, pu procuring for the crew. Um, you will have four cannons on both sides. Wonderful. That that is. And you will be equipped with at least no more than 150 cannonballs. That's quite the sizable amount. Thank you. Indeed. Hopefully, your cannoneer is quite capable of being able to fire these. I assure you, they will most certainly be the best. I think nothing less of Mr. Ezra's crew. Absolutely. The interviews are going swimmingly, and we'll have 
we'll make sure to have the the top crew I could find. Well, lads, we'll be in port here for quite some time. Mead said takes uh, takes up another thing of grog. We'll be in port for maybe another day or so. In the meantime, we'll get you your flag and we'll get you your ship as quickly as possible. When you're ready to leave, come out this way and we'll give you your ship. Thank you very much. To a new partnership. Aye. And to many returns, profitable or otherwise. All right, in game, you guys are now part of the Grand Design Pirates. Yar! <laughs> our eye patch our set. <laughs> our allegiance <laughs> rank just flew to the other side of the meter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, and with that, you're now at the ship. If you wish to speak to anyone else, anything personally at this point, you can. If you want to talk to any of the members on ship who might be able to assist you, like with Mead's crew, you can. Since you picked me, you can now like speak to them and get service from mm -hmm. them. Uh, I head over to the Gimme Brothers, <laughs> resuming the conversation I had before before we went in there. So yeah, do you think the moment you, you walk out, everyone fucking cheers? Like there's there's dudes like throwing bottles all over the place, like screaming, "Hey!" hey! Oh. Yeah! This looks like a fucking celebration beyond celebration. <laughs> there's dudes popping corks of wine, just like. And like pouring it, one pours it over Eloy's head. Oh, that's so nice and sticky, but nice. Thank you. <laughs> Just kind of nudge Eloy. I, I knew they liked us, but wow. <laughs> yeah, Dagon's never really had a reception like this. He's <laughs> just going to go enjoy himself. All right. Uh, Check it so. in. Welcome to the wonders. <laughs> There's Timmy looking at you. You like pumpkins? I don't dislike them. Oh, my best friend, here you go. Hand you a pumpkin rock. That's Wonderful, thank you. Um, Aren't you going to eat it? You know what? <laughs> chick here eats anything. <laughs> come on, Chick, come on. Come on, it'll ease the pain. <laughs> Just kind of shoving it near the quillion that has a mouth on it. You showed each, you showed each rock pumpkins. Oh, yes, he eats lots of things. What else does he eat? I don't know. What do you have? <laughs> I have this vial of acid that Mr. Rattles gave me. No! Oh! That's more of a drink. <laughs> I'll keep it for later, though. You might get thirsty. <laughs> One vial of acid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. Uh, so you wanted to talk to the Gimme Brothers? Yes. Both of them are sitting there, like, just smoking a pipe, sitting there on barrels looking at you. Hey, congrats. Hi. You're part of the crew now. Yes, thank you. Uh, now, anyway, we were talking earlier. Explosive bolts, the ones you've given me, have been working great. I'm assuming you have your materials or whatever you would need to, to perhaps give me some more before we leave? Oh, of course, you're on the ship. We could probably whip those up for you too sweet. That would be fantastic. But uh, how much are you looking to spend? Uh, I don't need a ton. Uh, I was just looking to, to restock, uh, get about 10 of them. 10, eh? Yeah. Probably run you about 400 bucks. All right, I can do that for sure. Excellent. They like both hand out, they put their hands out. I put 200 in each of them. Both of them kind of just like waddle on down to the ship. So while you're enjoying the festivities, they come back. You now have restocked yourself in explosive bolts. Excellent. So Eli's going to hunt up Mr. Rattles, who is expressing an interest in his in stories of his travels. Indeed. Yeah. Mr. Rattles is now sitting there with a book, just like, hmm, part of the crew now, eh? Yeah, that's that's the plan, I guess. Oh, well, welcome aboard. I kind of figured you you lot would join us. Yeah, I mean, we kind of went back and forth, but, I mean, it all comes down to those to those vampires, man. Can't stand them, don't like them. You, like, I was I was telling the whole big group in there, the, the Navy, it's not like the Navy likes them either, but you guys have a plan. I like that. Well, I'm sure, those, I'm sure the boys over there at South Zealous have a plan as well. Just something that we don't seem to like. I mean... If they, uh, if they took one look at me, they'd probably want to kill me. I mean, I mean <laughs> they can try. I'm already dead. <laughs> I like that. You know, honest Mr. Rattles, when I first met you, I was so spooked to you. I can't imagine why I do talk, I do commune with the Mound of Madness every day. Yeah, how's how's Mr. Gorbinth, full Gorbinth? How's he doing? Oh, well, hold on a second. I'll ask. He, like, traces his finger up in the, up in the sky. Roll a wisdom save. <laughs> Uh, 16. Do you need everybody to roll this? No, or? just him. Okay. Yeah, you're, 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 you're look, if you turn to look at him, you're just watching as Eloy's talking to him and he looks like he's just 
dicing like the sky or like pointing at something. Okay. For you though, however, you're looking into the fucking maws of insanity at this point. Your eyes glaze over the moment the fucking the sky opens. There's a hole in the earth. There's a hole in the atmosphere that just looks down upon you and tries to grab at you. Ah, you don't say. Like you're you're hearing ethereal voices that have no comprehension to you whatsoever. It closes. You're still hearing those voices. It's almost like they're gnawing at the back of your head. Snaps his finger in front of you. You uh, wake up. Uh. Oh, okay. Well, all right. I. To the untrained, it's kind of jarring. I understand. Little, little bit. Okay. All right. Maybe take. But he that. says he says hello and thank you for asking. Okay. Well, that's very nice of him. Whew. That was only his son, by the way. The one of the many sons. It is the wriggling mass of all and thinks it's sanity. I'm. I'm getting. Oh boy. Okay. I thought. Ooh. I wasn't so spooked to you this time. I thought I was. Thought I was better with this, but I guess I guess it's something you work your way up to little by little. Yeah, full Gorbit's kind of a kind of a chore to let get under your skin in a comfortable way. Yeah, I, especially when you don't have skin like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. <sighs> but but yeah, I met I met all kinds of spooky things. I spooked a couple ghosts to death, and Eloy just launches into tells him all about finding Granderfault and him turning into a stick and he stops you right there when you speak about Granderfault. You actually found a lost kingdom of the Azimar. Yeah! That was too boy. There was unicorns down there and troglodytes and Troglodytes is strange though the he like looks into his books. So I'm going to roll something for him. I don't really have that much, like, encyclopedic knowledge. Like, you're watching as he's flipping and pages just reappear, so, like, the book is just getting thicker and thicker with each uh, page turn. It's... Nothing in the book here states that you we've ever discovered anything that had to do with troglodytes. Though, there are whispers of a kingdom that used to, used to exist well before us that only other Azimar would know. And even then, probably this generation of those who live in Ibercal don't even remember. That's how long ago it was. But it does state here that they used to be centaur in formation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was tell, all real sad. Tell me, like, where where did these unicorns and other creatures, where, where did they get sent off to? Oh, boy, I'm trying to remember. They went through a portal, so it's not like we went there with them. Uh, hey, Captain Ezra. Huh? Yeah. Remember them unicorn boys down at the bottom of the ocean? Where'd they go off to? Was it North Zealous? Am I remembering that right? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where they went. Oh, that puts a little bit of a monkey wrench in that plan. Oh, I'm can't, sorry. Can't exactly go there, now can we? Unless we were Father Dorn, of course. He looks over to Dorn, and Dorn's just sitting there like... <sighs> <laughs> he does He does seem to be the respectable one. Thank you, Mr. Eloy. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess we can take a gander at what's left. I mean, like, you were continuing on. What happened? What happened to this place? Is it still down there? Yeah, not, not so much. <laughs> that see, the unicorns, the the big one that was there was the one that was holding up the bubble, keeping the whole place intact. I'm I'm pretty sure when he left, the whole place came crashing down, or rather, the ocean came crashing down on it. But this unicorn still exists. Oh yeah, he got out. Fascinating. Hmm. Well, I might not be this kind of person for this job, but, uh, Dorn, could you take a note of that? We'd actually like to see if we can get some, gather some info on that. Kind of hard to describe the fact that a unicorn exists in this day and age, Rattles. I know you old fucking raising you, but you could find it. <laughs> Very well, I'll look into it. Dorn kind of like walks off, like taking a note of it in, a, in, a, in what looks like a, an almanac of like all the gods. He just writes notes in it. Now, see, if we could somehow get our hands on this, or at least maybe not me, since I'm a little bit too out of skin for that. But if we could get our hands on that, think of the possibilities. We could. A unicorn's power driving something. That's something even the Navy can't rival. That'd be amazing for us. Yeah, I mean, you gotta watch out. That's what them trogs was trying to do, and it turned out real bad for those boys. Did they try to... Wait, they tried to drink the blood? Yeah, they was drinking that that unicorn blood. I wouldn't go down that road. No, that's not what I was meaning. I meant more of a 
keep the creature alive sort of thing. Try to coexist with it. Okay, good, good, good. That's that's what I was hoping. They, they were real nice fellas. Also, I, I mean, I guess you're already undead, so... But you seem, you seem fine with your situation. Those trogs were not into it, man. Oh, immortality? Yeah, it was a bad deal for them. We actually tried to get them to get killed by a dragon. Things didn't work out super well for either side of that equation. <laughs> but, uh... What dragon? I've, I've actually not seen a dragon in these parts for years. Uh, it, was a, it was a blue dragon. From what I understand, he uh, called himself Water Explosion or something really pompous. It was... He watches, like... F- like he, like, flips through his book. Water Eruption in Draconic Means Pops Ravi? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, he was a jerk. Did he claim where he came from? Not that I recall. I'm pretty sure he claimed that he came from Dragon Rock, but that's outside information if you don't remember it. <laughs> yep. I don't remember him claiming that. I know uh, yeah, Woe did. Wo did. I don't remember if Pavs Ravi ever specified that. <clears throat> you want to roll an intelligence with disadvantage then? Sure. If you guys really don't remember, then yeah, it's going to be with disadvantage. Seven. Six. Yeah, you don't remember if he ever spoke of anything of where he came from. Yeah. That's fascinating, because if there are dragons coming from the north, I don't know if there's any migratory uh, pattern happening at this point. He seemed separated from any sort of group he might have been with. He There weren't any others around. So I don't know if it's a if it's a whole migration pattern or something, or if he was just he was stuck in that bubble with us. It seemed like. So. I mean, they'd be afraid of dra- they'd be afraid of the navy here. The navy would even if just a young dragon tried to come in here and try to encroach on territory. Oh, the navy's aware of him. Uh, in fact, the navy was sort of who dealt with him once we were getting chased out. How do you mean? Well, we're all friends now. I guess I can talk about this. Uh, so, uh, Lieutenant Gore was there, and he made short work of that thing. How? <laughs> oh, in the back of my head, you <laughs> fucked up. You <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, no, you're right. <sighs> I, thought this was, I thought this was common knowledge. I kind of did too, but I guess not. So... Gore is a dragon. Hold on a sec, love. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Was this not... That's why uh, Eloy brought up asking if someone's a dragon. Yeah. Turn, turns out Gore is one. Yeah, turns out he'll just tell that to anybody who who knows to ask. That That's why I tend to preface, Hi, I'm Eloy. Are you a secret dragon? You know, that makes a little more sense now. Um... Why you asked that when I was handcuffed to the chair, uh, but... And that makes far too much sense for all the accounts we have in any of our notes about him. I guess I hadn't thought about that you guys would be at odds, so you probably, you know, didn't talk much at the water cooler or something, so probably probably hold not a lot, not a lot of information that changing there. Well, dra- what kind of dragon? This is kind of important now. Uh, uh ancient br- 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 brass? Br- brass? Brass? Shiny scales. Okay, what, one of those so. things that's like copper but starts with a B. Brass? That, that sounds, sounds right. Sounds right, yeah. My God. This explains the tan skin. He's a fucking ancient brass dragon? Yeah, so when, uh, so when this blue And dragon- you're going against this man. I mean, we're hoping- I'm sorry, man? No, not man. <laughs> Beyond that. But I don't understand. He he normally never keeps himself in a fight. He he claims he does not like to fight. He is he is a he wants to be the role of an advisor. He I I think I honestly think, and this is just me trying oh. to go out on the limb of someone who is who has had our back before. I don't think Gore is really like he's part of the Navy and obviously, you know, runs by their rules. But I He he does really dislike chaos though. That is true. And that that does seem to be what your what you boys are all about. Yeah, I, d- I doubt he would take kindly to pirates, but uh, I would say just try to avoid him as much as possible. I mean, I mean now we're going to even obviously more for so. your own sakes. Yeah, I mean, I mean the only the only way we could possibly ever take this pr- take Gore on is if all the captains were together, all the entire if everyone of the South Sea was here. Maybe even we need to get people from the sa- from the North Sea. That's a 
fucking terrible idea in its own right. Exactly. So I, I feel like it would obviously, obviously be in everyone's best interest to not say try to provoke Lieutenant Gore. Ever. He claims to not want to fight, but we've, we've seen him uh, stand up when he has to, and it's, it's a sight to behold. <laughs> I got this mental picture in my head that the instant you drop that knowledge, this entire room just went quiet. Yeah, and no. Stared at you. <laughs> just like you hear like a dude drop a mug of ale. <laughs> you guys didn't, you guys didn't know that. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, basically, uh, Dagon has just been over like flirting with Abigail, basically. Right. The one eligible woman that appeared to be there. <laughs> yeah. No, there's other people. Uh, there's females on the crew. He just randomly went to Abigail because that's right the on. one who I know a proper noun for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I guess I hadn't considered that this wouldn't be no knowledge. I mean, we didn't know, but I figured that's just because we were bumbling around the Navy without asking questions. I figured you guys would, would have known this. I apologize. This is... Yeah, no, he's he's a big, scary dragon. Be careful who you tell that around town. Uh, uh, yeah, I haven't been just going and talking about this, obviously. Already but... divulging secrets, are we? Well, to... To our friends and crew, obviously. Exactly. No, this is a great boon to us. With all the information you've given me, there's all sorts of things we could do with this knowledge. I would say that the uh, a lot of people down at the uh, at the oh, I'm blanking on the the guild seem to seem to be aware of his. No, uh, I mean Pontus and his lot. Yeah, they 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 seem to know. So that would make sense, though. They're trying to play favorites. I don't know what their entire end goal is, but it, they look like the sort that just want to keep tabs on the onrush. Yeah, they, they they seem to have an interest in making sure that, you know, the world doesn't fall into madness and all that kind of stuff. Abnable goal. But we much rather see that the world kind of push forward with new things rather than hide away and be scared of them. Exactly. Well, for all that information, one good turn deserves another. Please, wait a moment. Seriously, I thought they knew. I just ditto. Everybody, everybody at the at the Fortune Tides was like, oh yeah, everybody knows yeah, we didn't know about What's it. What's the big yeah, deal? Fine. We have pictures of him from like ancient times. Yeah. Of course he's a dragon. What else would he be? He's <laughs> like eight feet tall. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, you are part elf. You do realize that certain races tend to live a little longer than others, yes? Yeah, but he... Passed himself on M Mr. I can live up to 200 years old, Ezra. And that's just with half the blood. Yeah, but he never passes himself, himself off as an elf. He always kind of acts like a man, but I feel like, you know. Yeah, but remember the last time he actually found out there were pirates in his quarters? He didn't give them any quarter. He kind of just, like, mm -hmm. you know, punched the guy's blood clean out of his fucking system. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a terrifying stand. <laughs> <laughs> just removes blood. I mean, doesn't that exist? I mean, there's that one, uh, that one kid in part four who literally just has those little collector bugs, which is the most terrifying oh, yeah. overpowered stand you could think of if you use it properly. Collect his blood. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Rattles is kind of like pocket, uh, like rifling through like his coat, trying to like find something to at least give you a little bit of a boon for this, for at least giving us a little bit more of this knowledge here. He hands you a, a small ring. It's a silver, silver banded ring with a little light blue gem in the middle of it. Uh, this is a ring of free action. Ooh! The wearer who puts on this ring can have an extra can have an extra standard uh, uh, standard ability or standard action for one uh, for one day. Ooh! Wow! That's wow. awesome. Yeah. No, that's great. That's like an action surge from fighter. Thank you very much. This will. This will certainly help us. Mm, may this, may this spirit you a little bit further in your efforts in giving us all this info and all your travels. Absolutely, I'll try to, I'll try to make sure to uh, pass any information I get along uh, faster. I hadn't realized this was such a, such prime knowledge. What what else might you uh, have come to learn from, you know, said blue and whites? Well, there is a. There is a place that seems to, to, to be where dragons live. Uh, we found another dragon. She was blind. Her name was Woe. Uh, and she had claimed to come from a place just called Dragon or Dragon... Oh, I yes, we know of that. That's what I meant. I wasn't sure if 
this Pobs Ravi you were speaking of was a migratory dragon that just came down here from the island. Yeah, we we didn't get much information as far as, you know, if he had come from there. But he, like I said, he seemed to be a loner. He looked like he was trying to kind of make a name for himself. He he very much uh, liked to announce his presence when and he was And you around. claim this other dragon, this woe, she's friendly. She's a friendly sort. She's friendly. However, uh, when we when we met her, uh, the navy was present, and they may have taken custody of her. To I'm not exactly sure where she went, but ah, rat bastard, we could have used that in some way. I apologize. It was my hands were sort of tied. The navy were literally on the beach as she crawled on land, so it uh, would have been tough to hide. She crawled on land. What's her? Is there an issue with her that she just... She had been separated from her group and she was just wandering by herself, lost, and happened upon us when we were putting on a show. So you do do shows? Yes, yes, we definitely do. I feel like I caught that vibe. Right here on Stream 4 Star. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, uh, Gore... Gore seem to, to take her away, and I've, I've been told she's safe, but other than that, I have no idea on her location. Well, of course, he'd try to make that one feel safe. At least he's trying to acclimate it. Worst case scenario is that now we have two dragons to worry about in the Navy. I don't feel like Woe's much to worry about. She's just... She seemed scared, and again, she she had lost her sense of sight and just seemed to be struggling. I don't I don't fancy her being much for combat. If you say so, we'll just keep this word in mind. It just begs the question, why are there more and more dragons coming down this way? I couldn't tell you that that, that she had been separated from her group. I wasn't exactly sure what they were, where they were going or what they had planned. It all kind of happened really fast (laughs) in the middle of a show. Tensions were high. It was a day. All right, then. Well... If you can get me more information about any of this, any knowledge you could pass on to me, I can reward you in some way if it's great enough. Absolutely. I'll, I'll be sure to pass any information. AKA, we can go do on. your due diligence in lore, and I'll give you rewards for it. <laughs> I mean, how do y'all feel about fairy dragons? <laughs> oh, yeah. Which like, Riles just grabs you by the shirt and pulls you over. How do you know about that? Yeah, he's just a little guy. Yeah, he's, wait, he's a good boy. What do you mean? What do you mean? He's a little guy. What? What does that mean? Yeah, he was hanging out in a zoo in uh in Volcard there. Yeah, we stumbled upon him. He uh he seemed to have a bit of a sweet tooth. Uh, so we've just been kind of You've feeding, been feeding him. feeding it. Yeah, just honey. Yeah, he loves it. You've been feeding it though. Yeah. Now the fascinating part, and Lot might actually want in on this. Uh, they seem to secrete some sort of substance or something that uh has, let's say, just extreme psychedelic effects. No kidding, you're drinking liquid fey! Yeah, yes. fey oil, it's yeah. a hell of a drug. I know a couple of the guys in the... Uh, yeah, that, that is how people tend to react when we tell them that, yes. Yeah. I swore off the stuff myself. Just better safe than sorry. I don't use it a lot. I, I don't like to, you know... The fey wilds is actually a very big piece of full gorbit. That's the... Basically, his blood turned into mortal magic. Oh. My, my friend Jeb, he went insane. Well, we were originally thinking of maybe trying to get it to a safe dose. And, was, and, and was your friend a centaur? I do not believe so. No, he he just kind of sits in his hammock all day now. Okay, all right. D- different Jeb then. Oh, that's herd, a common name, I guess, around these pots. Yeah, no, herd herd master of my of my old herd was named Jeb. That's the only reason I ask. Gentlemen, well, back to the prop. Terribly 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 sorry, terribly sorry. Back sorry. to the back to the matter at hand. This is a little bit more pressing. You have this thing. I mean, I haven't seen him in a. You know, yeah, wait, wait, wait. we haven't seen him in a few You days. lost it? I mean, I'm sure. I'm I mean, sure as far it, as I know, he's still aboard the Yo. Yeah, as far as I know, it is still is still on our ship. Oh no, that must mean the Navy's already gotten their hands on it. I would say that if it oh, was that is, there, that is his name actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. I would say that if uh, Awake probably would have gone to the Yeldon to clean out his shit, and if it was there, he would have taken his bowl. And I'll take that into together. account, but they don't know yeah. this. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> these are, these were all <laughs> things that was going to bring up as was necessary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As we just like kind of shrugs, we're like, yeah, no, we left him on the ship. Figured, like, you know, like... You, you ushered in, basically, a... Do you not understand the complexities and the devastation that this could possibly have on this? I mean, we were sent... No. Uh, yeah, I'm going to float with him on that one. Uh, I, I was not a part of this it's, little interaction, but... 
even I am a little confused as to. I'd, I'd imagine so. So, um, I'm gonna put it to you this way: you have a very pocket-sized version of a titan of magic that could end the world if given enough power. Well, all you seem to want was honey. Yeah. You intrigue me more and more with each passing sentence. <laughs> I mean, if he's look, it it has been a very well-behaved, if not a, a tad overly hungry, uh, but. Other than that, no, it, it has been a, a model mascot for our ship, if anything. I haven't noticed anything yeah, amiss why, with the guy. Why would, he wanna, why would he wanna end the world? That's where he lives. No, he wouldn't want to end the world, but he has the capabilities to. Well, see, if we're treating him nicely and feeding him and being a gentle It's caretaker. a creature of the Fae. You're a part Fae. You should know of all of us, Mr. Lockwood, that the Fae don't play by anyone's rules. That is true. Dad was kind of a dick. <laughs> and if he's any indication of what the Fae act like, then yeah. Sorry, my 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 dealing with the Fae have, have no, actually been And think been of it as the limited. true Fae. The true Fae are, again, titans of pure ether and magic. They pull raw strength from every single plane. Then you'd think that when we got him from the zoo, someone at that zoo might have recognized something about it, but... Yeah, I mean... Like I say, people keep reacting like that, and I keep asking, like... Have I told you that he's that it is tiny? Yeah. It's very small? Because it wants to perceive itself as that. Oh, well... I, like, I'm still not seeing the... Pro like, would you rather we not feed him and make him happy? What What is the suggested course of action here? That's the problem. The, the only course of action I can think of is we kill it, but I don't know how to! Well, there... A, no, he's a good boy, and that B, seems like well, a good way to go. make him mad. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and that's the problem. I don't know how we can contain this thing if you've been feeding it and keeping it here. And that's what I'm saying. It seems like what what we've been doing has been working fine and has been serving everyone. That's not a good solution, though. I, I, mean, I feel like this is an inevitability for a, a world destroying catastrophe. I mean, I'm open to hearing a better one, but I haven't yet. That's all I'm saying. I don't know because I don't know anything about this as much as I know what I'm telling you. <laughs> true Fae sounds like a kind of dessert. I'd eat a True Fae. I mean, uh. not really, but, you know, if, if someone like, presented if, me if, a dessert dish. If you dish, spelled it with a F-U-E-T. Yeah. Like they're like, yeah Sorry, try, I, I haven't eaten. Try our True Fae. Anyway, uh, well, here we were going to go and make sure all of our stuff was off the ship anyway. We'll make sure it is uh, secured, because if if it is as powerful as you seem to to think they are, uh, I doubt they would go with anyone who wasn't offering up honey. And if they are as terrified of it as you are, they probably wouldn't think too. I'm gonna have to like look into ways to figure out this. We like we need to find someone who is way more endowed with knowledge of the Fey than I am. I am more about necrotics and the magic of life. I know nothing, absolutely nothing about the Fae, only that a good chunk of my magic is born of the stuff. Hmm. I can't say I'm of much use either in that regard. I wonder if it and Full Gorbent would get along. I, I dare say I think that's a very, very bad idea. Probably. Just, spe just thinking aloud. Uh, as a native of Ebrick Hall, can I roll like a knowledge check to see if there might be a resource in Ebrick Hall that might <laughs> Absolutely, know a little go bit for more? It. Okay. Uh, not bad. Seventeen. Uh, there are Azamar who are, have been around for like thousands of years, That's though they impressive. are. They are very, very rare and very rarely seek audience because they're trying to live their lives in solitude and don't want to divulge a lot of nature that could fuck up the course of history. Yeah. But there are those that have knowledge of things that are well beyond mortal concepts that actually can be given an audience, but they're very rare to speak to and they're very hard to find. You know, um, Captain, uh, sorry if I'm stepping over boundaries, but uh, if our destination is Ibra Call, I do know the town quite well and there are all some... Let's just say, really old fucking men that like to garner knowledge and keep it to themselves, and sometimes pass a little tidbit of it on. If you, if you are indeed going to get in good with the royal family, perhaps they could arrange an audience of sorts with one of these scholars. Uh, yeah. They might be able to help you with this situation as well as who knows. That's what right. Else. You boys are going to the calls, aren't you? Uh, yeah, that was going to be our next trip. I can't. I cannot tell you to waste your one question on these people for knowledge about this creature. Yes. But I urge you, 
if you have nothing else to ask of them, let this be the one thing. I mean, this sounds pretty important, and honestly, we've been keeping a roof over his head for a while. If he had this kind of power, he could have saved us from that giant. He could have solved all kinds of problems if he's as strong as we're thinking he is. <sighs> and if that's the case, that means he's no friend of ours if he wasn't going to lift a finger to help. So yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. Maybe he's just lazy. I mean, very possible. And if that's the case, hey, he's been eating our honey. He, he, should, he should at least contribute a little bit when he can. It gives me power for coming <laughs> forth in my true form. Did well, any I don't you, know did, that. Did, did any of you hear that? Hear what? Uh, uh, no, it must have been Chick. You look off to the left, there's Grammy looking at you off the corner. Hey, look, Chick, it's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> your sword is silent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like this is a boon for you. <laughs> Good. Alrighty, so I'm going to ask uh, real quickly because we're getting up to the point where it's like we just need to make some choices here. Mm -hmm. Um... But before we, like, the last thing we possibly could do tonight is some fluff for, like, talking to people around town. But we honestly don't have to do that. Right. But I would like to know what you guys think of making up for the crew. Okay. Uh, with the interviews I've had, I, I was thinking, so there's us three. Yep. I think Frank is a good cook. Uh, Frida, it hurts when she, when she helps you. But when she helps you, she gives you, it seems, a big bonus. So I think that's worth, worth doing. Mr. Large seems very handy and capable and good at repairing stuff, uh, and he is also a, a uh, established cannoneer. Um, and who else was it? Uh, for navigating, uh, Charlotte literally talks to gods to, to, to <laughs> tell her where things are. That's going to be awkward. <laughs> Especially since you're the one who actually tricked her. Yeah, things might get a little awkward there, but uh, you know, <laughs> she, she seems to be someone who loves destiny, so we can just talk about how this was just fate working in a mysterious way. Fair enough. Uh, Is that who you're choosing? And that, that to me, seems like the, the strongest group. You have... Uh, magic, magic is, like, a possibly a good idea, and I know Montgomery, Montgomery would be a good bard, but I don't feel like... Like, right now, we are kind of on an, a more urgent mission. This doesn't seem like it's going to be a lot of opportunity to be like, you know, we should figure out making setting up a shop for the wonders. I feel like he'd be more good to bring along if we are on a on a quest that will give us more opportunity to do yep. more And remember, the stuff. people who you're choosing all have combat capabilities as well. Yeah. So think of what they said that their job description is can be a boon for you in combat. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, I'm sure Magic will be upset after giving me a book that I'm still not bringing him on, but <clears throat> he can deal. You have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, that six, would be, seven. That, you have one more space. You're probably going to want a boson of some sort. Mm. Oh, you, yeah, Jillian. You, Jill, okay. uh, yeah, Harvest. She was, she was very good at repairing stuff with with wood and things like that. She basically had the power of the Yeldon, but just s slightly different. Yeah, yeah more nature-esque. Yeah. All right, so if I'm going to get this correctly, just so we have it on record. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, so... There's us three, so that's already three right there. I suppose right that there. makes me the helmsman. All right, so we have you three. Frida, Mr. Large, Frank, Charlotte, and Jillian. Sounds about right. Yes. Yeah, looking at this list, that is correct. All right, cool. So I can get to work on actually getting their sheets together and everything. Good, good, good. Uh, beyond that, and then uh, we could start off tomorrow. We could start off the next session with you doing your bard, uh, your bard uh, trial. All right, excellent. Because I feel like we've actually reached a natural stopping point. If for you this did want to do any fluff stuff, uh, yeah. If you if da Dagon would probably go and collect his your bindle. gear and say goodbye to his. Hammock mates. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, yeah. he, what he, I mean by fluff, it's like, do we want to talk to anyone in particular that's on that list, or anyone from the previous crew? Yeah, like the the only other priority Eloy has is to try and make some kind of contact with whatever whatever other centaurs might be in the area, just to ask after news of his family. Okay, I can I can work on that for next session. Okay, because by this point, it's like now it's time to start setting sail. Yeah. Uh, other, other than anyone who I would have to talk to to be like, which I'm assuming is that the halfling woman of just like. Hey, these are the people I'm hiring. I, yeah. I've made my decision. Yeah, that, that's pretty much me saying, like, hey, let's just, like, cut out the middleman and yeah. say that this is what you're doing. Yeah. 
All right. I so mean, I'll throw out there that Wake is still on the island if anybody did want to go find him. Yeah, uh, like Eloy will definitely want to say a proper goodbye before we set sail. As would it. And right. Wake would be there for the uh, funeral of the Yeldon. Which mm-hmm. will happen next session as well. All right. Okay. Yeah, that was... Beyond that, I issue. think we're pretty much good for the night, gentlemen. All right. All right. If that's all we got prepared for, then thank you so much for joining us, and we'll continue this next time at the table. But before we go, we, of course, have some wonderful fan art Yay. to look over. And let me pull out my phone from my crotch slot. There mm-hmm. we go. Ooh, real early, the real early end today. Like a got a kangaroo bit. with your phone pouch. Do 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 do. Yeah, sorry, sorry for that. But like at the same time, it's like I needed this information to go forward. Yeah, to to build stuff. And I hey, tr- uh, trust me, as somebody who's recently started DMing, it's hard to figure out exactly what three hours is yeah. in terms of what you write. Because the last couple of times I did my sessions, I wrote like an extra half a session's worth of shit on accident. That, that's what I've been doing for like the past couple of sessions. So I'm like, I want to see what happens when I write a little lighter than usual. I'm like, huh, it appears I'm a half hour <laughs> a little early. Makes sense to me. Either way, first off, we have... Ooh, Ooh look at that. Look yeah. at that, Mr. Rattles. Very indecent. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, there's, there's actually, there's there's actually a camera in my view uh, my view slot. Oh, can you not see it from there? I have to, to kind of like bend and look around it, but no worries. There we go. Here we go. It's by Retro Renegade X, who is taking requests. Mm. Different from commissions. I feel like this looks like Mr. Rattles hanging out in a Castlevania stage. Like he's just like, <laughs> I, I could hear Rondo of Blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see you found my boss room, Simon. <laughs> His fucking uh, poison mind starts playing in the background. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, thank you so much, Retro Renegade X. Next up. Wait, that, be- that being said, I would not mind if someone wanted to draw Mr. Rattles as Shaft. <laughs> I would not mind that. Here by Alliancer99 or at Saiyan Evie Girl, Ooh. we got some gentle. Some, <laughs> some ballet gentle. I believe this is. Uh, I believe we also had something else from them uh, on Fan Art Friday yeah. with a ballet Nedra. Nedra. I believe yeah. that's on here as well. Oh, awesome! Ooh. I'm just envisioning this is like right before she's about to begin. She starts doing her dance, and every kick kills someone. <laughs> <laughs> her and Nedra would be quite interpretive easy. dance is yeah. how she casts her magic. Her and Nedra do Swan Lake. Who would be the Black Swan? Who I was knows? just. I was just getting ready to say she this. would. This feels like fantasy Black Swan, and I'm in. Fair enough. Next up, who is played by Natalie? By at Candy High Gaming, we have an adorable, embarrassed little Nedra. Just, that oh, looks I'm like just a nervous. Nedwa. A Nedwa. I'm just a little Nedwa. Don't don't laugh at my tail scar. She's so cute and shy, so bashful, adorable. Thank you kindly, Candy High Gaming. We'll have to say goodbye to her too. She hasn't been like away from us for an extended amount of time. Really, all that, all that. She much. just gave a hug to Gore earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Next up, thank God this is on here because I just scrolled down. Like, if this isn't on here, you guys <laughs> fucked no, up. No, no, trust me, this had to get on here. Lie on a roll with Jillian Harvest, and by God, the colors, the colors, children, the colors. <laughs> color it is like beautiful. It. Like, I, I would use this as a like phone. Yeah, I was background. gonna say that looks like yeah. a phone background, like a really good one to me. Like, I am going to download it right now. Actually, I there have we to go. Describe what she looks like for all of her shades of like season. <laughs> Either way, thank you kindly, Lie on a Roll. This is amazing. We look forward to more, and I definitely look forward to taking a better look at this on Friday. Yeah. Thank you kindly. Next up, from Slug yeah. Bunnies, commissions yeah. are open, we got a little uh, ink shady Nedra here. Just sitting in the dark, just looking at you. I kind of like... Man, I, I wish I could hit stuff now. I kind of like that fuzzy tail design. Yeah, I was noticing that too. Yeah, it's got like the, uh, the mule-esque kind of tip at the mm-hmm. end where the hair is. Mm-hmm. Kind of lionish. Yeah, I dig it a lot. I also like the uh, widespread horns, like Beast from Beauty yeah. and the Beast. Yeah, digging it. Thank you kindly, Slug Bunnies. Next up, by Starving Artist, we oh. have we have Incendiary Wake. <laughs> God damn, I'm not grappled by you. You're grappled by me. <laughs> I just like to imagine this is like this is the last thing that creature saw <laughs> as it burned. I'm just to a death. Batman. <laughs> I'm just doing a job! <laughs> and I'm finishing it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> mm, still on fire. 
Yeah, believe it or not, this character I made, despite looking like way more of an edgelord, will be less of an edgelord than Wake. <laughs> Fire effects on this picture look awesome, though. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it is beautiful. I love how this looks. And there's a, like, uh, I know that, you know, since we only show one picture at a time, there is a side-by-side -side one with just the art. Oh, ah, okay. And man, no, like, yeah, that, that damn, really that is cool. some, that is some high-quality comic, like, yeah. like yeah. graphic novel-ass art. Like, this is insane. Nicely done, starving artist. That's at S T A R V one N G uh. underscore artist. Thank you so much. Next up, we got Hell this yeah. remodeled 3D Nedra by Jack O'Kyle. There was another one with that's like the full version. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one there. with her just standing with the uh, bat try like the Tatsubo triumphantly over one shoulder, arm mm. on a hip, and we'll look at, I, I think we'll look at that a bit more on Friday, but yeah, yeah yep. looking, actually, no, I think we looked at this last Friday, <clears throat> uh, but still, thank you so much, Jack O'Kyle. Looking great. Can't wait for the Skyrim mod so people can play as Medra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Next up. Ooh, oh. some. Yeah, oh. yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I remember looking, uh, I did much research with this photo. Um <laughs> Ba 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 boom. Uh, yeah, no, she she gets on the battlefield this gentle, and uh, she's distracting for many reasons. Uh, first of all, notice that dress does not have a back part. She's <laughs> she is. She, uh, like, she look. She you, you 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 start looking her up, and then she just goes, "You looked." <laughs> yeah. Ha ha! Now I get to now I get to blast you in yeah. the dick. Now I get to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like she's wearing an apron. This is by at Caro Dash Art. That's at K E R O D A S H Art. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Look forward to more. Mm -hmm. Thank you kindly. Next up by, yep, didn't even have to wait. <laughs> MFS Arts. Because if you don't include something by them, there is something wrong. <laughs> MFS Arts with some wonderful, wonderful, I believe this is Frida Gazimar in the guise of, um, oh God, I haven't played League of Legends in forever, but she reminds Katarina? me of, no, 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 uh, Vigar. Vigar, that's right. She reminds me of Vigar with this look, with the purple and the just seeing the eyes, but yeah. Uh, I thought you were going to say Swain, I was just like, actually, oh, fuck, you're kind of right. <laughs> you know what, we were just watching uh, Shira. A couple of weeks ago. She reminds me of a purple version of the Tit Wraith. Yes. Yep. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. And then Looking there's Grizzlor in the background. <laughs> Mr. Large is Grizzlor! Oh my god! Oh fuck yes! We're all Grant coming Lodge. together! <laughs> Grizzlor understand that you only hire for Cannoneer, but he'll help with rebuilding. <laughs> Mr. Grizzlarge. <laughs> Mr. Grizzlarge. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much, MFS Arts. Next up. Ah. Oh. Little train in Nedra. That's what you're going to see next time you go back to the monastery. There she is. Yeah, as soon as Wake has his, like, as soon as uh, Wake and his brother form this, like, you know, figure their shit out. I'm uh, getting centered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mindfulness. I learned how to punch my own hands. Ow. <laughs> punch. Is that, <laughs> wait, uh, is that what I've been doing to people? I, oh, man. Oh, that really <laughs> hurts. Maybe I need to learn better. She's been in fights. She's yeah. felt yeah. pain. Yeah, but she's never punched her own hands. <laughs> she doesn't know what she inflicts. I guess she's, that's fair. No one has she's ever put her in the situation where it's stop hitting yourself. <laughs> Imagine the fucking mental atrocities you could inflict on her if that happened. Regardless, this is by Caesar Morales at Ziga Exeron. Wonderful stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut anyone. No, 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 no it's fine. No Thank you kindly. Next up. Here there we have, there we go. by saying Evie Girl, Ballerina Nedra. And uh, like, we joked about this last Friday. That's like, Wake was like busy doing some, like, I don't know, fighting vampires. You missed my recital. And <laughs> Gentle's there. It's just like, well, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I was there, Nedra. I was part of it, Nedra. I joined in with you. I taught you how to dance. This is why, <laughs> this is why I trust you more, entering the darkest timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Nedra will remember that. Great stuff. Do we have one more on here? Is, yep. There Bam! Yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Grizzlarge, here <laughs> in full force by Bracky. Thank you, Bracky. I know I, I, get, I, gave, him, I gave him like jokingly shit because I'm just like, okay, this is great, but you fucked up something very important. We're seeing his face. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you did say a, a point of but lore you know was going to be I'm okay with this. That's such, a, that's such a winning smile. Thank you kindly, Bracky. His commissions are closed right now, but definitely follow at Bracky Zoid mm -hmm. to figure out when they are open. Uh, 
I actually got the boy working on something for me right now. Ooh. I look forward to it because this this boy he's good at drawing quite a few things. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Hit him up. He's a good guy, a hard worker, and an amazing artist. Is that everything? I believe so. Thank you kindly, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. And we'll see you guys next time at the table. Maybe we'll get off to the high seas finally. Yeah. What would that be like? <laughs>